Big Tech's ordinance has everything from complete firearms to OEM and aftermarket parts. If you're looking to put together your first AR-15, they have everything from those parts that you need to the tools that are going to be essential. If you're looking for suppressors, night vision, handheld lights, weapon lights, sights or optics, you name it, Big Tech's has it all. Not only that, they're offering all those brands that we like. Go visit them at BigTechsOrdinance.com. Overwatch Precision is a team of civilians and combat veterans based in Phoenix, Arizona, that employ industry-leading production methods, coatings, and materials in their striker-fired polymer-framed pistol trigger systems. With an internal engineering team focused on thoughtful design, Overwatch's flat-faced and curved triggers safely deliver a mechanical advantage to your carry or duty Glock, Walther, CZ, P10, and Smith & Wesson MMP 2.0 with improved function and increased accuracy. See more at overwatchprecision.com. Filster makes awesome holsters. But not only that, they also happen to be one of those companies that are trendsetters. A lot of their designs are emulated by other companies. Not only does Filstered make those holsters, but they also provide concealment systems like the Enigma, the Flex. They also have a lot of solutions when it comes to concealment solutions for medical. If you need to have a concealment first aid kit, they happen to sell them. Check them out at filsterholster.com. Primary Arms Government recently showed off a new giveaway, which features a new Daniel Defense M4 V7 rifle, complete with GLX 1 to 6 power first focal plane rifle scope, PLX mount, and more. These monthly giveaways are only open to first responders and members of the military, so there's way less competition for the big prize. Entry is also completely free with no purchase necessary ever. So if you want to have a chance to win, just visit primaryarms.com government and hit the giveaway button at the top. Walther is the performance leader in the firearms industry, renowned throughout the world for its innovation since Carl Walther and his son Fritz created the first blowback semi-automatic pistol in 1908. Today, the innovative spirit builds off the invention of the concealed carry gun with the PPK series by creating the PPQ, PPS, and the Q5 match steel frame series. Military, police, and other government security groups in every country of the world have relied on the high-quality craftsmanship and rugged durability of Walther products. Walther continues its long tradition of technical expertise and innovation in the design and production of firearms. For more information, visit WalterArms.com. Hey everyone, Matt Lanford here with Primary and Secondary. Welcome to Modcast. Today's episode is 326. It's going to be kind of a year in review, talking about all kinds of random stuff. And if we happen to talk about some stuff over the past year, hey, mission accomplished. Uh, this episode is not only brought to you by the sponsors and then the Patreon subscribers, but it's also brought to you by the Club from GoldenEye. If you're not familiar with the Club. You're missing out. Also brought to you by my wife, who woke me up 30 minutes ago saying, hey, weren't you going to do a podcast? Oh, shit. Mm. So, yeah, we, we had some 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 fun sick kid taking him to the doctor and only getting a couple hours of sleep and then trying to sleep after. And, you know, it's 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 a good time. Um, so before I actually we don't we, we can just jump right into stuff. We have Jack here. We have Steve here. These guys are, are regulars. What'd you get for Christmas? All kinds of good stuff. And this is assuming that your significant other does not listen, which mine sure as hell doesn't. Were the presents from you to you better than the presents that you got from other people? Steve, what do you have? Hmm. Since I'm solo, it's even better. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I get to buy for myself anyway throughout the year. Throughout um, the year, you know, exactly. It, 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 that's kind of it, right? It's like I got myself one present this year. I bought it in July and I put it on the shelf on a box and waited and wrapped it and gave it to myself for my dog. You know, I, I bought that. I, I bought that Randall. Uh, I bought that Randall. Oh, yeah, that's model, right. Five, seven inch. And uh, it, it's, it's one of the ones that's been on the list for a long time. I've got like, one of the Randall hollow handled survival knives, you know, like a five and a half inch cool kid blade, whatever that I've had. One of their old, old field knives that I bought a million years ago off of an old guy, you know, up, up North kind of thing, you know, out of an estate deal, but I always wanted like, yeah, one of these. I was like, Oh, this guy's got one. 
Uh, look at the price. Yes. So yeah, yeah you, you, it's always good to spoil yourself a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, especially if you can. Truth. Jack, how about you? Nobody cares about Jack. I'm going to use the uh, method where I think I have to stop the video so I can okay. talk. <laughs> um, um, well, I, I got one surprise gift. It was a watch. Oh. Um, not not terribly fancy, but apparently it was just hard to get this year. Uh, Swatch owns Omega, so they made like the the Moon Swatch. So it's it's still a Swatch, but it looks like their little uh, famous chronometer uh, Speedmaster, and so that was surprising. But honestly, this past year, uh, I gifted myself by getting a new job. Mm. Uh, uh, I also was. I hooked up with the guys at NTOA and I got myself a Microtech LUDT. So I got to get myself a knife as well. And, and I had only wanted that knife since about 1996. 1996. So that, 1996. Oh. So that was uh, Queens English. <laughs> so that was, that was pretty good. That worked out well. That's awesome. Nice. Yeah. I, don't think I got any specific presents from anyone other than my in-laws. I think it's just because everyone knows. Yeah. I just skip stuff myself. Yeah. yeah. Let's see that knife again, Jack. Ooh. Wow. Very nice. I've only got a couple micro techs. I've got two of the big halo fives. Those, those beasts. I've got a couple of those and I lost the Drax from them about two years ago they're small little open front thingy and it, it was small like and i have no idea where it's at it's probably underneath the couch or the dog yeah. grabbed it and ran off with it or somebody Sold pilfered it. it like half of my other kit in the past year you know whatever like pens. pens multi-tools everything this year flashlights <laughs> somebody's walking around with one of my mod lights somewhere in the country from a class yeah yeah th- like it was like the same feeling a buddy of mine few years ago like bought the gi joe uss flag like the the aircraft the aircraft carrier yeah. Full on the air- yeah. <laughs> he's like i'm not gonna play with it it's just the fact that i always wanted it now that i have it mm-hmm. that just makes mm-hmm. sense right like you get it well it, it's it's interesting i uh accident not accidentally no i purposely on facebook on my feed some toy thing came up of some action figures i thought oh that kind of looks neat and I clicked on it and it's all these, I guess, newer generation GI Joes. It's the old school characters, but they're really, it looks like they're really well designed. And now I get that regularly in my feed and looking at that going, it's kind of cool. I kind of want to get that. I'm not going to play with it. I just, I just need to wait for uh, my two-year-old to grow up a little bit so I can yeah. just buy it for him. There's so many jokes coming from this one. There's just so many potential jokes right now and I'm buying right. my tongue. You're playing with. Yeah. So good. So, speaking of Christmas presents to yourself, I have a PTR 18 inch G3 clone mm-hmm. on the way. Nice. Steve, you, you've been a guy who's been fans of, <laughs> of things like that for a while. Yeah. Are there any recommendations you have for someone who's Starting out this whole G3 thing. Mm, mm. Get all the 308 you can find. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get, get all the big boy bullets you can get right now. Um, you know, a couple of things that help with that gun. Uh, obviously, we're taller dudes. The length of pull is not bad for us. I like the spur stocks. Oh. Um, I have one of the spur stocks on my one. Um, most of my others I've kept in either the original configuration or the shredders. I've got a bunch of different, you know, H and K variants and G threes and weird stuff like that. Um, the Midwest rail makes life awesome with all the unlock on it. Mm. It really does. Uh, that's one of my favorites on that gun. It's just super clean and it's all M locked up and it's very handy. You know, I keep a chunk of pick rail on the bottom for a bipod for zeroing or whatever playing with it um yours should have the optic rail already on top correct it does sweet um spur stock is your friend the mm-hmm. now it's gonna be like a 204 mount right because of the spur stock drop um you can find some of those um like stock adapter riser thingies that will kind of fit on those for the most part pretty much 
kind of a good recommendation because mine, uh, my one rides a uh, one to six razor on it. Um, Timony's trigger for it. Hmm. Timony makes a trigger for the G3 series. That's actually pretty nice. Um, especially if you're going to do any precision shooting or hunting yeah. or whatever you want with it, you know, um, it, it does make it a little bit nicer, even though the other one isn't unmanageable and there are some springs and other guys doing conversions and toys and stuff for them, you know, like anything else. Um, but I, I would invest heavily if you just got the standard one with the regular four end on it, not the unlocked slotted one, whatever I would, I would definitely invest in the Midwest rail. Cool. Um, one, 100% for it. I, I, I like the spur stock a lot. And it's just a great stock on that gun, especially when I start throwing on like winter clothes. Cause I often take that gun with me on uh, winter trips to remote locations. So it's kind of nice. Um, it's definitely a good contender for low powered variable. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you, you can take the Buck Thomas approach and chop the front sight base off the ring because it's absolutely useless because it's not adjustable. Um, especially if you're going to throw one to six on it you know, or something along those lines, just, just hack it, get rid of it. It's gone. Angle grinder, hacksaw, Dremel, whatever you choose, pocket knife, EMT shooters. I don't know. Um, but like the must haves for me, um, the Midwest rail and the spur stock are the main two. Those are the yeah. main two that I would say get on that gun. Right. And after that, life is easy. A, a good one to six and a set of low rings will help with that mount. Um, you know, it's not going to be the most precise cheek. Well, but it'll be a pretty good enough one to do. Um, you know, I just have a lot of fun shooting it because it's a big, stupid, heavy gun. and It's great. And they're pretty reliable. I mean, coming from having a PTR that's done up, uh, having several H and K's and the heavy caliber guns and the light caliber guns. Um, you know, it's, it's just not a bad gun and the mags are still cheap and plentiful. That was my next question. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the steels um, are the aluminums and why? Or both. I have both. I have both. Um, because at the time everybody was selling them like, oh my God. So like when I really dove into the HK, you know, G3 ish world, I was like, oh, mags, and they were, you know, a dollar each. You yeah. Know, kind of, oh, yeah. Then you, were, then you were getting the deals like 10 for five or whatever. And then, you know, just progressively on. So you just, oh, yeah. Every time you're at a gun show or a shop or something, or somebody had some online, and so you're like, <sighs> you know, grab a handful, throw them in the box. Um, I shoot both. I, I haven't had any issues with either or magazine. Um, you know, and it's not like, it's not something like we're taking to the top of a mountain, right? It's not this whatever gun, the, the South African mags have run, the aluminum ones, the steel ones, the German, you know, they're, they're all a good magnet gun. And the only one that I would stay away from is the polymer, like, mm bake light or a light whoever the hell they are you know that's been around forever i still have a couple of those in the packages from like 1989 that are still in a box just for like don't do this right don't don't, yeah. don't do these even though even though a couple of them had worked but they didn't work over the long haul for me and that could have been anything right because at the time we were shooting a lot of battle pack rounds from the old uh, pmp days which was Pretoria metal products uh, for those of you kids that don't remember those, you know, we used to go to the gun shows and buy this brown battle pack of this ammo from South Africa. Um, and they were amazing because they're like 69 bucks for like 300 rounds or something stupid like that. If even that, probably 49 bucks now that I think about it. But yeah, um, get a lot of ammo and shoot the snot out of it, man. It, it, it's a great time, right? It, it's, it's, it's just a fun gun. They're soft. There's good weight to them. Um, if you're going to use it in other roles, like I used mine hunting for a couple of years, yeah. um, the one G3 with the, with the razor on it. And, you know, I fed it a bunch of like 180 grain Remington core locks that I had, you know, from ever. Um, I killed a couple of white tails with it out to about a buck and a half, buck 60. I'm like, yeah, good enough. Yeah, you know, two inch yeah. gun, two and a half inch gun at a hundred yards. I'm like, it's a battle rifle. You know, it's not a sniper rifle. Right. So yeah, um, but the spur stock in the Midwest Railer are moss. I threw a Magpul vert grip on the front end just to help manage balance of the weight of it. A um, little chunk of bipod, you know, pick rail on there for a bipod when I want to throw one on real quick for zeroing or just setting it down. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. That is the one gun that I do recommend a padded sling for. Mm. By the time you deck it out, you know, it's 11 pounds. It's a big, bulky gun. So, you know, having... I run two sets of QD cups on my rail, one at the very front and one at the back, just yeah. like we would an AR for anything else. And yeah, man, like, but with the Midwest rail, the spur stock, uh, like I said, if you upgrade, you know, Timothy's got the trigger for it. We, we know some people there. 
Um, you know, it, it's good. And then, like I said, I just, I topped it with a one to six razor and it's been awesome through a uh, mod light on it um, with an OKW head just because, and I was like, yeah, this is cool. Now it's 14 pounds. Um, so it's awesome. <laughs> It's well, like might... 14 pounds with that much more capability and yeah, yeah, usefulness. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I, I exaggerate the 14. It's probably 12. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's a great gun. I mean, there's no denying the roller lock, right? There's no denying it. It's been, it's been proven for, you know, 200 years, basically, let's just call it. And it's, it's just an amazing setup of gun and people kind of diss them because they're heavy. Right. Well, it's heavy. It's unwieldy. It's this. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, well, there's a thing called a gim. You can lift heavy stuff. Sometimes. Hey, that's Come a direct on. quote. Yes. It I've is, heard right? him say that. Yep. And you, you can lift some heavy things with it, or you can just do gun curls. It's okay. You know, you can do that. Um, but, but it, it's, it's just a fun gun and it's something different to take to the range and shoot. You know, it's just, it's not an AR, it's not an AK. It's this, and it's just fun overall. And, but I'll tell you the capability of the gun is good. Um, I would not hesitate to use it on animals out to about 300 yards at all um, with the accuracy that I have out of that gun. And I sure I can play with the ammo a bit more and probably find something else yeah. a little bit better with some barns. But I'm like, hey, man, like old Kmart box Remington Corlock federal jacket and soft points I killed whitetails with. I've got the five round whatever magazine yeah, that yeah. I found somewhere in a box. It's just a good gun, man. They're just, they're just a lot of fun. You can dress them up like an M4 as much as you want, but um, yeah, those are the main things, man. They're yeah. really just a great, great gun. So I already have an FAL and I absolutely love That's it. One. Awesome, awesome, awesome gun. Yes. I needed I needed the G3 clone. That's all there is to absolutely. it. Absolutely. You, you've got to have both. I, I've still got a FAL. I've got one of my first FAL build kits from like 1990 when you could buy the parts out of like, you know, Gun Digest, Shotgun News. And it's like metric inch, metric inch. We'll make them work somehow, you know. Um, they were fun guns, you know, one of the Israeli models too, and then something else in there. Oh, yeah, I've still got one of the ones from DSA or DSG or whoever it is. And, DSA. you know, very, yeah, early on, early on, because um, I wrote an article about it in Surefire mm-hmm. a million years ago in Combat Tactics. And I had one that had, you know, whatever their X4N side folder, 16 inch pair of models. Great gun, fun gun. And I love, I love a foul. There's no arguing that gun. The U.S. should have picked those instead of an M14. Just saying. Yes. Yeah, M14. Say, that's not on my list. I'm going to say, in the words of Reed Knight, it was the <laughs> roller lock Nazis that got to go to Spain and yep. continue to make guns, and they just roller locked the fuck out of everything. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> hey, man, I'll, I'll tell you, like, like the like, it was really fun sitting, you know, all the years at Magpul because, like, Dwayne, right? Dwayne's a roller lock snob. And, you know, local to me is Joe at Dakota Tactical. So it's like, yeah, yeah, you know, Joe built my G3K for me off one of my 91s and some other stuff. And yeah, they're, they're just great guns, man. You just you just can't argue those things. They're just so stupid, silly fun. Because you only get 20 bullets. That's right. <laughs> and the reload's didn't, so slow. Didn't Springfield and Fortum... Yes, uh, back Aren't in the those guns uh, now, like, like yeah, late eighties, early nineties, they had that whatever it was. Um, I want to say it may have been off the grease contract. I don't remember; it's been so long now. But yeah, Springfield had one—the SAR nine or something, the SAR whatever it was. That's a, if I remember correctly, and that was that was a cool gun. The, the one that's eluding me still is a PSG. Oh yeah. I want a PSG sniper rifle so bad, but I don't want to spend the $19,000 on an yeah. inch and a half gun. You know, that's that big. I hit the Mega Millions off five of them, but, you know, other than that, it ain't happened. So I have other guns that do other things. That was a weird best time. You had, Dude, Springfield's, with- you had Springfield importing H&Ks and H&K importing Benelli's. Please. Like that was... I have one of those. <laughs> My 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 uh my Duke Nukem gun man my uh my my original uh M1 Super 90 yep, my M1 and I have one of the Beretta Benelli 12 whatever the 121s the Woodstock ones. <laughs> Daryl wants that gun for me bad and I won't give it to him. He can't have it. That was actually a Cabela's find about ten years ago. 
in the bargain cave. But I mean, the days, I mean, like, like Jack might remember him. I doubt it, but because us old guys, but no, I mean, at the local gun shows here back in the late eighties, ninety, early nineties, man, H and K guns were five ninety nine. Mm -hmm. You know, if I could go back in time, I would be like, I'll just take this table full of these, you know, guns. If you show people, uh, my buddy's got a, an original, like Gen 1 Glock 17 in the box. And if you show people that box, they don't believe that it's a real gun box. Like yeah, it, it, it looks like, yeah, it looks like a tester's model kit of a Glock. Like if that's what it looks like. And uh, it's wild, dude. Yeah. And I think they used to sell those things for like 80 bucks until all the other gun companies were like, dude, we need you to stop. I still have a Gen 119. <clears throat> still have a Gen 119. Hmm. Shit is wild. Ro roller lockers are still the best. I'm not going to lie. Hmm. Oh, I do still want a the original version of the Galil. I, I have a, an Ace, Ace 2, which I think is an absolute awesome rifle. Uh, I want a 5.56 Galil. I sold my 392 or my 396, whatever it was, side folder, um, with a bazillion magazines a couple of years back at the height of some weird stuff, and dudes were clamoring for pre-bang guns. I paid something like 900 bucks for that gun way back when. Side folder, chart, you know, the whole Typical Galil gun, you know, absolutely awesome gun. One and nine twist barrel. It was terrible with anything but 55 grainers. And I had a dude out of either out of Illinois or Mass somewhere like that. Some one of the weird, you know, occupied commie states. And he wanted that gun bag because it was on the list that they could have. And I sold it to him. Like I made some big money off that. From I was like, sure, it just sits in a safe. And I wasn't teaching a fam course anymore on them to some dudes. So I'm like, yeah, cool. Got it. I don't need this anymore. I don't need that anymore. The, the 308 Galil is fun. Oh, the 308 Galil is just amazing. Mm. But anyway. Well, yeah. speaking of 308 and Israeli type things, talking to Jeremy, the 308 Tavor, he, yes. it sounds like there are things that that thing has that really need to go to the 556 variant. Because there's, I, I, it sounds like it's just a refined, better rifle. Yeah, yeah. I, I played with the one that Tom had at a course in an alliance, and he had one of them, and it was like it was it was fun gun, soft, soft gun in the bullpup. So let's talk about some training things. Mm. Have you guys seen any? Has there been anything funny, goofy? noteworthy any noticeable changes in anything training in the last year that you've seen oh, companies boy. coming up out of nowhere companies disappearing people retiring you, you know i won't see a lot of new companies starting up per se at some levels but i will say there's dudes that have been around for a little bit who kind of found their their role right or that little niche part of that market for them that does well and that was kind of good to see a couple of those dudes really, really bring it on good the past year. Um, and that was awesome. Uh, you know, notably Joe Dawson, Bruiser Industries has kind of kicked off his, his thing, you know, kind of full-time-ish. And that's, that's great to see because Joe's just an awesome dude. Super good wealth of knowledge. It's good to see uh, Nick from Velox doing really good as well. Um, so there, there's just a lot of it, you know, and, and again, there's always going to be you know, these fluxes with all this. Um, I think interesting stuff that, we, that we've seen over the past year that is changing again, but not changing, but not being worded as such is like, you know, the latest thing, you know, okay, well, you need speed, you need accuracy, you need a timer. Now you don't need a timer. You should be doing this instead, but you should go back to a timer. But yet a lot of these dudes based everything off of a timer. And I, it was funny because I was talking to some dudes about this. I'm like, you need timers. Right? There's, there's no ways around it, right? But not everything in life has to be based off a timer. And, you know, we've all talked about this for years. I mean, this is nothing, again, new, right? Like Vickers has talked about it back in the day. Every, all these guys who do progressions. Um, and it's good to kind of see that coming back around too. And I think sometimes a lot of that is that dudes that and it's not thrown out at anybody in particular, it's just an overall, you know, 10,000 foot view of it. 
is that they're realizing that while they're putting out content with this, it's attracting students, but it's not attracting the students that are ready for that timer yet. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of in the old days of this, of training when guys wanted to touch the magic from the seals and the Delta dudes that were first showing up on scene back in the 90, you know, early 2000 ish era. God, it's hard to believe it's been 23 years of that, you know, 22 years going on 23, but you know, there's kind of this thing where it's good. And, you know, while you have a vast percentage that are ready for that, you have that other percentage that are the new kids in the block in the training cycles that are seeing it and like, okay, well, I'm not ready for this, but I'm ready for this, but I really want to go shoot with this person or these people or this group or this organization or whatever. And I think some of that may have to do slightly with that too, that some people just aren't ready for that full blown experience yet where they need a little bit of, and I could be totally wrong and, that, and that's fine. It wouldn't be the first time, but, but it's a good balance, right? You still need both. You, you need all these things and the reinvention of verbiage this, this year has been awesome, right? It's just like, Oh my God. So, okay, we're going to shoot pairs now. Okay. Or doubles, or is that a controlled pair or an accelerated pair? Is that a hammer? Is that a double tap? We don't really know, but it's a pair either way. Right. But pairs were bad for years. Right. So, Never shoot in pairs, always do this. Well, unless you're doing this type of CQB, then you shot everything in pairs. And then if you did this, it was like fives and sixes and eights and NSRs and what, whatever. And it's like, oh my God, well, please, you guys, please just stop. For the love of God, just teach the people what they need to be taught and what they need to learn. And just, it's not this hard, but, but so, it, it's kind of good. So if I understand you correctly, what you're saying is instructors should be focusing more on teaching the student than putting up their stuff that's a little funny, little niche way of doing things um, and getting their name I, out through that. There's some of that through some of those people, but honestly, right, it, it, it's a good thing to show people that if you put in the work, you put in the time, you put in the effort, you understand the whys behind it and the hows, you can obtain this, right? But also you're going to have those people that aren't the, you know, these snap-on tool mechanics either, that aren't going to spend the amount of time that some of the other instructors will to be at that, you know, that level. Right. You know, and that's just a thing. You can introduce them to it. You can show it to them. You can teach it to them. How much of that percentage is going to retain it and maintain those practice or proficiency levels once they've understood it. I don't know anymore. Right. It's just, it's just a thing. And how much of it is guys just want to go and do this course. Cause it looks fun. <clears throat> but no, I, I think, you know, all of it matters. Like we've talked about, right. It all matters. It's just finding what matters most to you, I think, more than anything else as a student. I don't know. It's, it, to me, it seems if you're using more simple verbiage and a way to communicate that people understand and they can turn around and explain it, retention is going to be so much better. Yes. Versus having uh, to know all this scientific uh, mumbo jumbo uh, that no one cares about. Just talk. It, about it. It's like, do you remember your first low light school? How much did you really care about your rods and your cones? How much did you really care on day 1.5 of rods, cones, rhodopsin? This does this. These have this chemical cocktail that does this and breaks it down to keep you from burning out your retinas to allow you to retain your night vision if you can flash with a bright light. Yeah, stop it. Nobody cares. I was just amazed by what I was seeing, and I couldn't believe mm. how I hadn't noticed it before. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, the verbiage is easy, right? And this is the thing we've talked to dudes about forever. And it's, it's important, right? Because not everybody is at a Cowan thesaurus level of verbiage, yeah. right? Um, but ultimately, you know, you're trying to reach, it's like Fenneman once said, you know, it's like, hey, man, you basically have to explain this to people on this level, right? And if you yeah. over explain it, that means you don't understand it. Yeah, yeah you know, and, and, and that kind of thing. I know I kind of chewed that quote up a little bit, but whatever it's, um, it's, it's a process, right. And, you know, going into departments and agencies with train to trainer stuff, I'm like, look, I have to break this down to an X number of hours. And I have to get this across to you in a way that you can relate it to your people next, the next range session, right. Or the, the next training session, the next in the service or whatever you have going. Yeah. That's like, man, this is, this isn't hard. Just tell them what you want them to do with the gun. That's it. There's four fixes to everything in the world, man, when, when it comes to these toys that we're shooting, right? There's four fixes, be it a carbine or a handgun. There's four. That's it. After that, yeah. Well, that and the secret to shooting, just like that one-minute video that you and it was you, Pressburg, Blowers, and I don't remember who else. Mm -hmm. It's going to be universal. 
you're pressing the trigger without disturbing the sites. Done. Yeah. And the only way to do that is to manage that whole process via the grip. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. We're giving away all the secrets. Yeah. Right. I think, you know, just with a lot of that, um, I definitely see some charlatans. Let me know if I go RoboCop so I can turn off the feed. Yeah. Uh, um, I've definitely seen some charlatans this year. Like, mm -hmm. um, and that is what it's going to be. And they always get found out. That, that, like that, that eventually gets sussed out. Yeah, eventually. Um, That's the important thing to remember. Yeah. yeah. Eventually. Um, another thing, and we spoke, to, we spoke about it. Are we going? Are we going? Oh, no, no, no. What, what Steve just did, he just get, he did that goofy. <laughs> the center axis reflux, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, uh, I think what we spoke about on the airing of grievances at the end, there's definitely going to be people that want the tactical band camp experience. Yeah. And those guys are going to go to that. And that's fine. Like, that's fine. I mean, it's sometimes, fun. fuck it. You know, if I got a weekend and the money, do it. And you're going to do your ready ups again and again, and you're going to get your collector certificate of your, like going back to the action figures, the GI Joe's had to buy it on the back. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, you would collect those and you would put that in your little file cabinet and you're going to have those certificates of your favorite dude, you know, and, and then you're going to go hook up with your buddies and you're going to pull out your collection of certificates of like of your favorite tactical band camp guys and it's not mean that you're not going to learn anything from those guys and I'm, there's i'm not in the training space so it's it's i'm speaking out of turn obviously when i say this but um i think you're gonna f part of you getting training is is probably going to a dick bag course one time where you go like man this guy was a tool and not only was he a tool, he was like the entire toolbox. And Hopefully I don't want to happen this happens early in your training career. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um and kind of like also what Steve said, you know, how many times are we gonna rebrand something? Yeah. Like like do, like do I need to three like, years? If I say right, and if I say hammered pair or controlled pair. Why do I need to act like I made that up? I think people have been like, and, and the reason what I would like would, but if a guy wants to call it a, a controlled pair or a hammered pair, or if I just say, Hey man, I want two in the dangerous hammer. doubles. I, if I call it, right. I'm going to call them dangerous doubles. You know, you go. It's there you go. And, uh, and it's like, it's like, I have a, it's like, I want you to put two in the head. Yeah. And the reason why I want you to put two in the head is because it's a smaller target. So I want you to see what kind of uh, the control that you have in that smaller target. And then I want you to immediately put a second one in that smaller target. So not only do we have accuracy and speed drill, but then we're going to have a recoil control drill mixed into that. I don't know if that's reality, but I'm, I'm, there's three things that I'm testing with that. And that's why I'm having you do this. Yeah. Every that drill is a, is a recoil different. control drill. Right. You know, like that's a way different presentation to a student. Yeah. And I'm going to put this little beeper thing on there because I know you could probably do this fast, but if you're anything like me, for some reason, I feel like I'm swimming through molasses half the time, every time that damn beep goes off and I, and I, and I'm mildly retarded as soon as it happens. Right. So, and that's the thing. Oh, you're going to, that's the thing. And get, Terminator. And shout out Getting to Matt Tropico, double penetration to, to just firing. Make yeah. So like sometimes there you are. <laughs> You're back now. Yeah. Sometimes just making a like I had to get an app on my phone just to make that damn beep, so I could get after it, and mm -hmm. and that's important. Uh, but it's like you said, it's. I'm sure call it whatever you want, I, but yeah, you're right. I mean, like I said, I, I, I've seen some charlatans and call out for that. will come yeah. soon. Yeah. 
and a lot of it is right. What is the application, the context you're putting behind that exercise, right? It's not just doubles. It's not just, you know, build drills. It's not split build drills. It's, it's, it's right. It's, it's just shooting. Like me and Mike known had this talk back in November. Um, we were on the same range in Utah, you know, we were hanging out BS and, uh, in between some courses that I was doing. And we, he, he goes, Steve, you, you know this, right? There is no magic. You just have to go do it. I'm like, what, what else is there, Mike? You grab the gun, you align the sight thingy. It's a dot or it's the bumpy things on top, right? You use how much ever of that you need based on the time distance value of target and just shoot the damn gun. It's, it's not that difficult in that aspect, right? It's when you start adding the complications to the task, right? The timer is the biggest one, right? That is the biggest, the, the biggest kind of variable in that equation is when the timer comes out because a lot of people don't know them. They don't use them or they don't know how. Like I told Tim Harris, I said, Tim, if you did a course specifically on timers and how to use them correctly, <laughs> you'd win. <laughs> Exactly. It's like, instead of like a four hour block talking about the cones in my eyes, I'd rather go over like, uh, I'd rather go over, uh, using a timer and using a timer to break down a skill drill, like the draw, like I'd, I'd rather use like, you know, like I said, isolation. Like, uh, so yes. Isolation is like 1.5. So 0.5, just get to the gun, you know? Yep. Uh, yeah. but one, one out 1.5 on target shoot, like that, that could be like a, a block of instruction is probably a little bit more well worth than anything else. Mm -hmm. True. So Eric, we started and with then call it whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Eric, well, uh, we started with talking about, uh, all the good stuff we got for Christmas. Then we talked about G3 clones and now we're talking about changes improvements, all kinds of stuff like that within the training world within the last year. Oh, you mean everybody renaming everything, every hey. telling you what an idiot you are. If you don't buy into their renaming, I'm just going to sit here quietly. Hey, Eric, that's okay. You were, you were only like a gun site adjunct guy for like seven and a half years. So they let you have a shirt. So let's be quiet over there. You don't know nothing. You're right. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but i did get I a really cool you did and that's okay i got like an 80 year old bottle of hag and hage hag and hag single malt scotch for christmas now who is it from though family okay i was gonna guess nice. you no family <laughs> oh god that'd be nice i'd take that it, mm. it's got the most unique top on it i've ever seen it's like ledges and a lever so you've got to unlever it and then pop the ledges and you got to put it back on in reverse very hmm. very smooth must be nice i wish i had your kind of money <laughs> or at least the families <laughs> yeah really god Just saying. really from steve yeah okay <laughs> well that's that's prioritization with spending. Mm -hmm. True. Nothing else, Eric? You didn't get any? No, nah, that, that was it. That was it. That was it. Okay. That's fine. That's boring. Yeah. Yep. So other than the renaming of everything, what else on the training in the training realm has been notable over the past year? I like the collaborations that have been going on. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. With people with different perspectives or similar perspectives, because both have been really cool to do the collaboration stuff. Um, yeah. I got lucky enough to be invited to do a thing with Steve, Rob, hot bulky yeah. um, earlier this year on shotguns, no, Tom yes. Givens. That, that was a lot of fun. And we're going to do that one again. <laughs> Um, and I've seen other people. Why is Steve shaking his head? Ah, eh, never mind. I don't want to know. Um, Shotguns are stupid. Yeah, they That's are. Right. They're, they're dumb and they don't work. Yeah, I've just seen some other folks doing collaborations, and that's the cool stuff. Um, I think the only other thing I'd throw out there that's that's the less than cool is, look, we we've, we've all got 
we all look at things that are taught that we may, and we may find something out there we disagree with or we disagree with a trainer and stuff. And the one thing I'd say is just put the time and effort into why your stuff's worthwhile rather than spending time attacking other people. That seems to be a huge issue with so many different things. And it's across the board, not just gun industry, but yeah. heavy in the gun industry. Don't even look about look at armor stuff. Oh, where that's oh, yeah. yeah, that's a lot of the uh, marketing for some prominent armor companies. Okay, we're not going to talk about our stuff. We're just going to bash our competition. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. tell me why your stuff works. Yeah. Tell me why your stuff's worth my time and money and ammo. Because yeah. these days the ammo is like, well, still as hard and to get as the money and the time. And last class and last match, I had a ton of failures to fire with relatively new factory stuff. So, you know, uh, my my uncle worked in sales his entire adult life, and he told me something. He said, "Coke don't talk about Pepsi." Yeah. yeah. And, it, and it's also, it's just like, it, it t- unless somebody's just like a complete danger and menace to society, like what, what does it do you to talk about that person and put the bad mouth on that person? Wow. Especially if they like, fuck, does it matter? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's, I so said, we're buying, they're selling more guns than ever before. There's enough, like there's enough. Like people are going to go around and people are going to seek that out. You know, people are going to seek a continuation on that. You don't need to track. It's just a bad look. I mean, it's just, uh, um, if anybody's religious, I remember there was like a part in the Bible where they said character assassination spiritually was the same as murder, you know? So it's just like, just chill the fuck out, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And the Bible does say that last part too, about chilling out. It's in the new Kings James rap version. That's right. Yeah. I think it says, it says have a moon pie and a seven up and, and chill out. Mm-hmm. Some chair wine. You'll be all right. <laughs> oh God. I hate you, Jack. Anyway. Okay. What about, on the, should... Oh, go ahead. No, go. go. I was going to say, so we've covered training. What about on the equipment side to include oh. armor? Yeah. Anyone go away, anyone up here who looks promising new uh, pieces of equipment that have gotten your attention or new pieces that you've gotten that you went, you know what, this really works or this doesn't work. Mm -hmm. A couple of the ones I've played with this past year, some of the glass from primary optics or primary arms, primary arms, primary optics, whatever, who cares? Who, who cares? Primary it's Arms somebody, Optics Division. Optics. Yeah, sure, them. Um, I got a hold of one of their like one to eight, whatever, you know, slap it on something to play with and just check it out and play with it and look at it. And then, uh, you know, for the price point, it wasn't bad, right? For the, for the weekend, you know, a few times a week, you know, year shooter that doesn't, that can't afford forward to go like hey man like i'm gonna go out and buy a whatever and i'm gonna slap a one to six one to eight one to ten whatever it is on it you know I, i've seen some glass this year that isn't bad right and, and again sample sizes of one i've seen some stuff from athlon i've seen some stuff from written right on whatever they are uh, some of the stuff from primary you know it hasn't been bad for those dudes that don't want to spend or can't spend, you, you know, bare bones, a minimum seven, $800 on a, you know, a, you know, a vortex PST gen two or bumping up into a razor, but they want this capabilities or the abilities I'm like, yeah, man, this isn't a bad alternative option for you in the 400, $500 ish price point. Yeah. It's not going to be the most greatest turrets probably aren't going to track a hundred percent. But if you're slapping it on the carbine, you're using up to 300 yards, it'll do you just fine, you know. And it's not bad, right? It, it's not. Um, it, I'm with you, man. That that right on one to eight is dude. surprisingly good, especially with the reticle options. Yes, it is. It's. I was like, 
hmm, this optic is a definitive contender, right? It, it, it really is. And there's a lot of good optics, right? It's just your price point, right? I mean, we, we all know this. We can go anywhere from the $500 price point to the $15 to $25, $3,500 worth, right? We absolutely can. We've all done it at some point in time in our life. God knows I've got a box full of that stuff. And, and there, there's a lot of great glass. But I'm like, what does scope A do that scope B doesn't do for me for a $700 price difference? If especially, I look at it, especially based on what you're doing. Yeah. Right. If, if, if a dude can't see well with his red dot anymore, because of these things, whatever's changed, man, it's not bad for, for the guy who's the occasional weekend shooter takes one or two courses a year, goes to the range, does some practice, like some bang, some steel out of two, three, 400 yards. Hey man, it, it ain't bad. <laughs> There's always an option out there. It doesn't always have to be, you know, a, a $2,000 Collis, you know, night force, whatever. If you're not the pro user, so to speak, right. The pro sumer, so commie, whatever ninja, but Hey man, you just want a good piece of glass that you can see with and shoot well on the range. Yeah. There's options right now. Also, if you take care of your stuff, stop it. Well, with some of those options, like Steve mentioned, drunk robot. Uh, you know, I'm not as old as Steve, uh, but you know, oh fuck, <laughs> doing it. How about now? You still sound like a drunk robot. I think for next Christmas, you need to buy yourself some internet. Just buy a, a can of internet. A new router. Yeah, I'm on that. I'm on that Steve Fisher internet, right? Yeah. <laughs> but Steve hey, is having these issues. No, mine's better now. Hey, look, we're getting fiber optic next week out here. So oh, wow. Finally, after umpteen years of living in the dark ages, I'm getting fiber optic, right? It's just, it's just that great. But no, I know what Jack's saying. I was going to say, like, you know, like any, any of those options that Steve mentioned, if we would have had those options 20 years ago, that would have been the cat's ass. Absolutely. Case. And we were like, this is acceptable. And not only is it acceptable, I'm Mr. Hot Shit because I have it. It is not anymore. So you have to like measure that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I you know, Eric will remember these days as well. Um, you know, when we, when we were doing this silliness, we had a loophole one to four. We had a loophole one five to five and maybe like a Burris that was floating around for years. Right. Like we remember these days. Cause I mean, yeah, short you know, me and Chuck. Yeah. Short dot. I mean, I had, I had a case of short dot optics in the room mounts that, that Schmidt had gave me back in Oh six to pimp around in my, in my old programs and use and stuff. And I was like, man, I had, I had the whole kit. Yeah. You know, it was, like, it was amazing. But, you know, I used to get a weird, a weird look, 2008, no, 2009, there was a magical course. And I was running around with one of my rifle on my root gun. I think it was 09, 010, 10, right around there. And guys like, wait, scope, is that a sniper rifle? I'm like, oh, dear God. No, it's not, this is nothing new, right? We talked about, it's like me and Chuck, I think, talked about it. That one thing we did with tech, with big uh, tech ordinance down at the uh, symposium. You know, this is, this is not new. We're just getting better options in it now, you know, that are doing better for us. But none of this, none of this again is new. It's, it's all circular again. But yeah, there's options now and there's really good options. But before our options were limited, you were either getting Schmitz, yeah. Swaros, you know, nobody knew what that was outside of, you know, some high-end hunting worlds ever. So it was Loophole, Burris, whatever. Then you had, you know, then you had Trigicon, right? 2000. Yep probably seven ish time frame, probably a little bit earlier. I can't remember exactly when the TR 24s were showing up on scene. I should remember this, but I don't, but you know, I remember getting my first TR 24, you know, putting that in and go, man, this, this is amazing. I got this big green triangle in here. Oh my God. You know, and I still have several of them on guns floating around here, but, but it's just, you know, they were kind of, I won't say the first, right? Because obviously we had the Schmidt short dots. We had all kinds of other stuff floating around, the loopholes and that. But like true 1X stuff, like when I go back yeah. in my my vault, my memory bank, it's like, man, that TR-24 was one of the first ones I can recall. There's probably one before that, obviously. You know, that was in a price point that was obtainable. Right? Not that the optic wasn't there. 
but the price points were yep. making them astronomical for the European glass. Yeah, with, with the combination of stuff that you're talking about, right? The cost and the one power and and yeah, they and, were the, they they were the first. Yeah, because the US good op- options. Yeah, because the U.S. optics and the short dot that I used on deployment w- weren't weren't there. Yeah, no, no, they weren't. No, because they were still a one one. You know, they weren't a true one X. While they were fast. they left you wanting at times yeah primary arm sent me uh, a box of optics and i'm trying to figure out okay which one is going to start on that g3 mm, and that's one to eight the probably one to eight. probably uh, so a friend of mine and eric's came into one of my courses um this year and cop in the in state you know their patrol rifle program is very limited at that in person's agency and blah 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 like, hey, I'd, I'd like to shoot this, but I'd like to try a scope. I'm like, whoa, this ought to be exciting. Here we go. <laughs> you, you know, and I was like, oh, God, this is going to hurt explaining any of this, you know, but whatever. <laughs> Eric's over there just dying because he knows. And I'm like, so here's this rifle. It's an amazing rifle. You can shoot this. And it's got this optic on it. It's got this top mounted red dot on it, you know, at 12 o'clock, which again, 2007 ish called, eight ish, you know, era. Um, these are the things you're going to do with it. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Tracking on that, you know, and even as a cross dominant shooter, cross dominant shooter, it was just amazing to watch how fast somebody could pick it up with just a, just a simple overview of things like, Hey, this is just how this works. Right. And this is what I'm going to have you do with the gun. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. And even for a shooter who is new to a magnified optic and a 12 o'clock red dot, having some common sense between their ears and some decent understanding of things was able to go, wow, that 12 o'clock dot makes a lot of sense for either a finding the problem and then dropping down to it and aligning. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. This goes back to like artillery shit and mortars and things. And then being able to use it in certain positions versus the variable power, which you weren't going to get up to, you know, think low ports on VTACs or, you know, low step barriers or shooting through and over and around other things. It was like, this, this is just a really amazing combination and force multiplier of things. You know, I could use this gun from the CQB aspect, patrol aspect to forward observation. If I'm on patrol and this happened, this happened, I could set up with it, gain real time intelligence while we're getting everybody in all the things like, like they just rattled off the list. Like I was like, and that was day one of three. And I was like, Oh, okay. So you think you're smart. Okay. Hero, we got you. Watch this. But um, it's not as complicated as people want to make it out to be. And it, it doesn't have to be. But when getting into that, I, I would say that one to eight, either GLX or SLX or whatever it is. Man, it's I, I'd slap that in some low rings. I'd put it on top of that G3 and I'd just get to work with it, man. I would. In your experience, has the G3 been a eater of optics like the uh, Scar Heavy was? No. Or is? No. No, the, the G3 is good. A lot of it too with the scar, um, you know, that bolt mass was a big thing, right? Yeah. Cheap, cheaper optics mounts were problems. And what, you know, a lot of that too was, as we were finding out at one point in time, it's kind of like, cause people were dropping the bolts, right. On empty guns. That's causing a lot of G's on that bolt mass going forward without anything kind of retarding its action and getting it. Yeah. You know, uh, so yeah, I mean, there's been some very real problems with things, but you also have to look at it a little bit deeper too. If it was that bad, it still wouldn't be, well, I, I shouldn't say it wouldn't be still being fielded. There's a lot of things that are bad that are still being fielded, but you don't hear about it anymore. And a lot of it was based on the select fire versions. You know, this guy's like, oh, I don't know about that scar. It's going to kill that optic. I saw it on M4 carbine or ARF comrade. Shut up. Do you own one? No. Have you shot him? No. Do you own three? No. Don't talk to me. So, uh, yeah, I've got 8,000 rounds on one of my heavies. Like, I don't even want to hear it out of you. Stop it. It's had a handful of optics on it, and they're all just fine and dandy. So, not saying they're not going to break, but something will break sooner or later. It'll probably be the gun before it is anything else at this point. But, hmm, no, like, like new stuff, things that I've seen, some stuff I've seen behind the curtain that are coming are pretty interesting. Um, Again, we're, we're, like I said, you know, about a year or two ago on one of these things, we're, we're still in a technology race on things. Guns, guns are always going to be guns. They're going to be the same thing. You put a magazine in, you open up the cylinder, you turn the thing, you do whatever to them. 
Um, but no, we're, we're still in a lumens, you know, candela race, and we're we're still in a race for that emitter optic that is going to be awesome on a handgun, right? And while we've seen a few that are really good, what still baffles me is some of the ones that are coming from companies that are still just doing open emitters. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you're at, you're, we're at this stage in the game where, yeah, an open emitter is still absolutely fine. We, we all carry them. We still have Trigicons. We still have hollow sums. We still have whatever open emitter optics that we carry. Why are we still even making them at this point? For the concealed crowd, really doesn't matter a whole lot. Uh, people working in other environments, patrol stuff, dudes that are standing out in misery all the time. <clears throat> Absolutely. But man, comma. <laughs> like, there, there's no reason, honestly, to be making anything anymore open emitter. But there's no reason for it other than costs. And, and that's it, right? And, and, and that, that's just my assessment of things. And I could be totally wrong and feel free to slap me. But why are we still building open emitter optics at this stage in the game? I don't know. I think I think you hit on what might be the only argument, and that's the concealed crowd. Yeah. Just <laughs> because I do find with my acros, I print a hair more than I do with the hollow suns or a tritch. Yeah. But we have smaller closed emitters now. Yes. EPS, EPS carries, right? I mean, you know, deal with your Chineseums, whatever. Um you know, and I, and I tell guys this, I've got an EPS, I've got some carries, I've got acros, I've got all of them. And it's like, hey man, pick one, it's all good, it's all going to do what you want. But at this stage in the game, I'd be like, why am I building an opening better optic anymore? I don't know. Maybe somebody will tell me. They probably will, but I don't know. I don't know. The one I've been surprised by is that Roman 2. Stop the building. We like SIG. And the the one I tell you what, man, the one I've been surprised by is that Romeo two that Bilderberry in it, mm-hmm. and I've, dude, I've just been been running it. I've been carrying it. I don't know if I've got, and that's the thing. I was like, I, I'm the only guy that I know that has one, and uh, the person that told me about it was Aaron before it came out, you know, and it was like on his experience and like what he told me, uh, and you know. I, put it on my staccato so it's an even crazier and uh i'm not trying to be controversial here but it just fits the delta point pro footprint so i don't need a damn adapter plate to put it on there um the but like i said i I don't know if i have the one of one i know aaron was very pleased with his and he right you know kind of gave me some 411 um, and I have no idea what that new closed emitter one that they leaked the pictures of. I have no idea what that's going to be like. Um, like, but to be quite honest with you, like this Romeo two is, I feel like what the Delta point should have morphed into yeah. about seven years ago. Um, and the, uh, shit, where was I going with that? Yeah. It's just like the, the rest of them. I, I T and E'd the EOTech and that needs, that needs work. And again, we're going back to, but the reason, the reason that was built was it's, it's getting, it's built to a, a, a request. It's built to a spec, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, because the military hasn't requested a closed emitter on a pistol yet. Uh, When they do, I'm sure everybody will also pick it up, but um, they'll build whatever they're trying to do with uh, you know, the same reason why the Delta point got picked up is because it was a top loading battery, you know? So that was one of the key, that was one of the big keys at that point, whether it was the top loading battery deal was, was huge, right? That, that was a big one. Um, you know, then we saw obviously SRO and some other stuff like that, that started coming out with it. And you're going to see a couple more this year that are top loaders. You're going to see at least one, two that I can think of. Um, in variants or variations um open emitter we top are, loaders or open emitter top loaders okay. pretty strong pr- pretty strong contender i i suspect by nra show we'll see them okay I, I i that's what i'm suspecting i've seen some i've played with one i know aaron has one of them i think as well that he's beating up on that he has been for a little while um yeah it's it, it's interesting 
it's interesting. Um, you're going to see some more closed emitters this year. You're going to see at least two that I can think of that will be coming around. But why? But why are we still in open emitter world, right? Like why? Yeah. I, I, I don't understand the whys behind that. But, you know, here we are. You, you know, it's like, and none of them are perfect yet. None of them. I, I don't care which one it is. Um, Acro has had issues. Acro P2 has had its certain little problems here and there. This this one, this, they, they've all had problems. It's just a matter of when, because they're still, in, you gotta, guys got to remember, right? There was nothing that was purposely built for a pistol until Acro. Right. Acro was like the first optic that really said we have specifically built this for handguns. Right. Everybody else was kind of like, oh, well, you know, and, you know like while well, Chijapan had the SRO out first, you know, they, they can say that obviously, but from what, you know, my understanding is like very specifically the Acro series was designed to be a perfect pistol optic. You know, this was, this was this, um, but you know, whatever, some company did something first that somebody else did that somebody's doing something, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's all the same shit. Um, I had this talk with one of the optics companies about this and I was like, yeah, man, what's it do differently than everybody else's dot? Cause it's an emitter with a battery and you turn it on and you zero it. How does it do it better? And why does it do it better? <laughs> I just and thought I something. Crickets. Go ahead. Great. It's just Steve and I, everybody else has gone away. Oh, we don't oh, Jack, Jack's still there. Jack's still there. I thought that was his old picture. No, man. No, everybody went, oh, nope. Dad's a what happened? You, you know I'm who sorry. I saw a picture? You know who I saw a picture of Jack that, uh, from down in your neck? Of the I went, man, he got old. He got old real fast. I was like, Jimmy Travis. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good old Jimmy. <laughs> Bro, too, man. It's an election year. I know. Get all. <laughs> I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, good old Jimmy. So a yeah, company. Oh, go ahead. No, man, it's a tangent of whole politics is getting wild this year, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so a company cold called me out of the blue. I pinged primary and secondary mods and asked, hey, do you guys have experience with this company at all? I have one of their gun cases. It hasn't been bad. It's actually been kind of unique. It's the company's savior. When I was doing a little bit of research, it looks like uh, Mike Grantham also has a, has a deal with them. And so basically they said, Hey, yeah. Um, They basically said, Hey, if you're, if you're interested, look through our catalog, tell us if there's anything specific that you might be interested in looking at. And I said, well, I actually have a little experience already with your, with your, with your products. I have the, uh, the full size guitar case that I use as a rifle case. It's been good. I would be interested. And I looked over the catalog and there's some kind of, there's some interesting, cool options in there. One of the, the, one of the things they sent me was uh, I have a range bag and a gun case. And the gun case has been getting a lot of posts from me, primary and secondary. Kind of strike it looking one. Exactly. The problem. It's this big. Is the width. Yeah. Oh, I know. If it was a single, just one side, it would be something completely different. That being said, it still is very nondescript. Can't tell what the hell this is. But Unless you have, on the internet. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, yeah. one of the issues I also could see with this is the possibility of overpacking it because you could easily have long guns on both sides. And now you're going to, you're going to, it's going to blow out because there's yeah. too much weight. But it's a, it's been a cool bag. It hasn't been abused yet. Right now, I've just been looking at different configurations and figuring out, okay, what do I want to keep in this for the assessment? I'll probably have a, a long gun and a pistol on one side and ammunition on the other side, just to balance it out with a jacket or something on both sides. And then keep it in a trunk for a while and throw it down the street a couple of times and see what happens. Um, but so far, yeah, this hasn't been bad. I don't have a discount code. I don't have anything. 
like that. They don't have any official dealings other than they sent me a couple things for free. Um, yeah. But it's not, it hasn't been bad. I've kind of liked it. The range bag is, has been also very unique. I haven't even started on the review process of that. I've used it, has some cool features to it, some unique stuff, but yeah. I think the other thing this year that was kind of interesting is the, um, while it's boring in a way, I mean, it's, again, it's a thing, but it's like some of the, what we would consider budget gun companies upticking, mm-hmm. right? Making, making better, doing better. Oh. Yeah, that's the next topic. And oh, there's well, it, case, oh, no. I'll shut up. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm just going to shut up now, Matt. No, I don't care. Fine, fine. Be that way. Fine, whatever. Okay, before we go to the next topic, <laughs> anyone else have gear, equipment type stuff from the past year that stuck out, good or bad? Companies that have emerged out of nothing or that have disappeared. Come on, Eric. What do you have? Oh, uh, no, it's, it's going to be my left-hander's complaint. Like, somebody just brought out a new holster. Yeah, I know. Shut up, Steve. Shut up, Steve. Go away. I just They brought out a new holster, and they sent them out to all the editors where I work. And I had said specifically, hey, need this left-handed. And they're like, oh, yeah, we don't make left-handed stuff. Thank God. Oh, okay. Great. Is this Rock a company on. that you messaged me about yesterday? No, this is somebody else. Okay. <laughs> this is – actually, they're included in it, but it wasn't yeah. that. <laughs> um. You know, it, it's just like, I guess that's my complaint for gear this year. And if that's my only complaint, then I'll just shut up. Well, it can be left handed. You're just going to shoot right-handed. You're just going to draw funny. Learned it. I can shoot right handed. Just barely. your hand. Barely. Hmm. So, Steve, gun stuff, gun companies. Yeah. There's one specifically that has gotten a lot of positive feedback. Hmm. And uh, three years ago, I would not have predicted that any of us would be saying the things that we're saying. Three years ago, I was sitting at a round table in that company's boardroom with some other industry awesome. Yeah. Guys. Yeah. And when we saw the future on the wall. Yeah. Literally. And it's sad because people listened to the last podcast airing of grievances and Caleb was on and he was talking about Taurus and people were upset yeah. a bit about it. This is not something oh. to be upset by. This is something no, to, to embrace, good. to be excited about. It's good. Um, and no, that, I'm not getting paid by them, nor is that, primary and secondary. Now that, that company has done well. Uh, they've brought the right people together. They've done a lot of good in a very short period of time. And I'm excited to see where they, well, we kind of know where they're going this year. <laughs> And it's good. And the direction is good. And, and again, right. If you can get people in to their first, second, third guns, whatever, you, you, you know, at, Hey, like, like I've carried a G three C around for, for quite a while. Like it's, it's one of my grab and go, just quick grab, clip it on, you know, run them store guns, whatever else the gun works, the gun shoots fine. <laughs> I'm like, it, it prints 15 yards point of aim point of impact with, with, with the ammo that I choose to carry in it, you know, after trying a couple, uh, they were just out of gun sight. I, I know Caleb was and some of the guys for the um, revolver event with Daryl and them. And, you know, it, 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 I, I like the direction that they are going. I yes. like the direction they're going. I, I like the products that are coming. And as long as that crew gets to maintain control and stay the course. Yeah. So out of curiosity, why G three C and not the G four G four wasn't available yet. Then. Okay. I ended up with the C3 or the G3C. Um, and I was like, you know, for something, just whatever gun that I was like, I want that thing. Right. You know, cool. Um, I've seen the G4s played with and with their Toro optic mounting system or whatever it is. Um, I kind of dig it. I'll probably get one of those sometime this year, you know, going into 23, just looking at one of the full size guns to quote, you know, but I have enough full size guns and I want to, you know, a few more compact ish guns. Right. Um, and, I, and I'm not the world's biggest G19 fan at all. I think it's a stupid Same. gun. I think, I think most small, smaller ish, you know, it's like you either carry a 17 or you carry a 48. Right. It's yep. like, it's like, there's yeah. no, no in between. Yes. Preach. But, but I get it. Right. Like, yeah. I, like I understand this. I always get dog piled on it. But I don't care. I've got a I think that has something to do with hand size. size. You know, it's, it's, it's a little bit of that as well, but just, 
getting a perch because everybody preaches grip. But if you don't have enough space to grip around the gun, right, there can be issues for some people, right? I get it. And then guys are going to let you go to G3C Compact. I do because that is just a small, good gun that I threw in the stable that works. And it's like a you know three hundred dollar pistol versus a five hundred dollar macro three sixty five six hundred ninety nine dollar gun. While everybody wants one of those, not everybody can afford one of those, right? So they're, they're not everything revolves around us as a whole, right? There's a bigger world community of people out there. Um, hey, man, for a three hundred odd dollar pistol, I'm like, yeah, yeah, dog. I mean, it shoots, it works. I've carried it. I not that that means a whole hell of a lot, but I'm like, I'm like, I can carry almost anything else I wanted, and I've, I've carried, I've carried the snot out of that pistol. Uh, you know, Eric, Eric can chime in on some of that stuff too. Cause Eric has seen the other side of that house, with the Mossberg crew with the Mossberg pistols. I haven't okay. seen them. I, I haven't been down oh, there. For, I didn't know for, you were up for the events. No, I have not been down for any of those events. Well then um, we don't care about you then. Stop talking. Yep. So what's new? Well, it's like, let's be honest. Like I said, on the last one, I said a, a Taurus G2 and a box of Monarch has got more bodies out there than just about it. <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, I'm really excited about that 12 gauge judge that they got coming out. Um, that's a joke, guys. Don't hold your breath. Uh, no, the circuit, the circuit judge from Rossi. Yes, that looks very promising. So, John the Fish Cop, my buddy, uh, he, his family, his dad was specifically looking for a low cost long gun for uh, uh, shepherds. And so he was looking at bolt actions. He was looking at lever actions. And I saw Rossi posted about the circuit judge. And I thought, oh, wait a minute. Ooh. Yeah. If he's looking for like 38 and, and, and 45 uh, long Colt lever actions, why? How about, look, let's look at this. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a solution. Now, is it going to be, is this what I'm going to go? I'm going to go clear rooms and, and stay, save the hostages at Nakatomi Plaza with it? No, no. But there's a purpose Ooh. behind it. And Taurus and Rossi are related. And uh, three years ago, again, I, I, I wouldn't even pay any attention to them. Now under current management, okay, I see a, I see a, perp, I see a, I see a reason to have this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I have a Rossi twenty-two meg semi-auto. That's my oh. ranch critter critter gun, critter gun around here. Um, does an amazing job on raccoons and other things that try to get in the chickens and do everything else, yeah. you know, just, just a great gun for that. And, I, and I'm a diehard Ruger guy, you know, like everybody else, I've got 10 22s and 77 22s yeah. and all that good stuff. And they're great guns, and accurate guns. And I wanted a semi-auto cause I would get not like one, but I would get three raccoons at a time. Right. And they'd yeah. all show up and just swarm. And I'd be like, Oh, fantastic gun. It's been great. It's accounted for a lot of bodies the past two years. Yeah. But I've had it and it's been an outstanding gun. It's taken some other critters in the hunting aspect. But um, this past year, um, we talked about, it, I think, in the one, I, I picked up one of the Rossi 357 Mag uh, 92R yep. Triple Blacks. Yep. I threw a Vortex Spark Solar on it, zeroed it with the cheapest American Eagle 158 grain jacketed soft points I've had, and I killed three white tails with it this year. Yeah. You, you know, and now I look at it and I go, I want to get a second one in SBR. <laughs> <laughs> like I want to get what I want to chop it down to about a 12 inch gun. <laughs> yeah. And put a can on it and run 38 specials, but I'd like the 357 mag one enough that I'm going to buy a 44 this year. Yeah. So because and I can, for people that aren't familiar also, I, I figured it probably isn't a bad idea to talk about that circuit judge just a hair more. So everyone knows what the judge is. I still think it's silly. What the circuit court judge is, is it is a circuit rifle configuration. Judge. You have a stock, you have a long rifle, you still have, and you have a, yeah, a cylinder, like a revolver. It is a revolver, but it's a rifle. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, 1800s called. They want that back. Yeah, it's true. So I was, I was bringing it to, up to my dad and I, he's like, wait a minute. There was a character on, I think it was Gunsmoke that, that carried one. Like, that's just cool. Okay, TJ wants to know if the Taurus 1911 is the new entry level 1911. So, no. yeah, Joe Chambers no. and I discussed it, and it's a no. no. I received one. The trigger reminds me almost of a Glock. Mm-hmm. I haven't shot it yet. 
Mm-hmm. Is it horrible? No. Is this a high-end 1911? No. But I look forward to shooting it. At least the, the safety is nice and positive. If I was looking right now at like an entry level 1911 gun, single stack, God's caliber government gun, um, I would be looking at the, um, and I've only seen two this year in courses, right? But it was enough to make me go, okay, this ought to be good, right? You kind of look at it and go, oh, this is going to be bad. Oh, they shot well. They, they survived two days in the range. I mean, you know, five, 600 rounds, not, not a huge testament, but, you know, enough. The, the TSAS or whatever, the TISAS, TISAS, T-I-S-A-S. Oh, is that one of the, one of the Turkish guns? Yeah. Yes. Interesting. Um, they've done some really good things. I was talking to one of their guys uh, about three days ago, four days ago, just before the holidays. And he's an industry buddy. He's working there now. Um, has been for a little bit. And he's been around the block for a long time. And he's just a great dude, super nice guy to know. And we were talking, just playing catch up, you know, like normal before shot shot. So I'm like, hey, man, like I saw two of the guns in course. He goes, how they do? I said, you know, they did okay. You know, they, for, for being what they are, a $599, $600 gun. I'm like, hey, man, like he goes, you know, we're making some changes on some stuff. We're doing some other things. Um, the gun is almost, almost like, except for like one part, I think, or two. That's the only parts that are them, like one or two pieces, like, like just some weird stuff. I was like, Oh, that's interesting. You know? And he's like, you, you know, in full disclosure, he's like, you want to get your hands on one? I said, yes, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot one. Just, you know, invoice me, do whatever. Like, ah, just, you know, I'll get you one, whatever. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, so I'm getting one of the government guns and 45 iron sight, you, you know, with a rail on it, because you got to have a rail on it. Cause I need to have to, um, you have to, and, and I'm going to shoot it. I'm, I'm going to play with it this year. I've got God knows how much God's ammo stacked up in the corner yep. somewhere. And I'm going to go take it out and shoot the snot out of it, man. I'm going to try five, six different, you know, eight round mags for it that I have from various manufacturers and I'm going to shoot it. And you, you know, my goal is to put a thousand, 1500 through it or so, and just kind of see where it's at at that point and what it does. And if I haven't killed it by then I'd go, well, okay. It's yeah. not bad. You know, if it, if it can do that with, you know, a few minor problems and what I would suggest being like magazine, probably related more than anything else. Cause that's one of the downfalls of that gun is magazines. But yeah, I'm, I'm kind of excited to play with it. Right. It's like right, yeah, $600, $500 Turkish pistol, you, you know, with a couple of variations in their lineup, but I'm like, you know, what, what, what's it going to hurt right at this point to play with these guns anymore? Cause it's like, yeah. we've all done this gamut of all the awesome guns, right? We, we've all got high end pistols. We've all got high end rifles. We've all got high end shotguns. It's like, and while some of us have still played with the, I won't say lower end stuff, but the more economy grade, there's, de- there's definitively a market for that type of yep. gun in the market, right? Yeah, it's absolutely. so much more rewarding. Yeah. And I know Eric did some stuff with uh, one of the Turkish variant M4 shotguns for an article, and that came up pretty well. Uh, you know, it's not like the days of old when we had certain Chinese import copies of the Ithacas in the 870s, you know, and the early guns that were bad. Now they're just getting better. You know, there's a thing going on over there that they've had for all these years called a war. And they've made guns during those war efforts for a lot of years on a lot of companies' machinery that they've bought over the years, right? I mean, it's just what it is. And I go, I mean, there's a lot of Turkish high, high-power clones out there still doing a lot of work, right? I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there. No, but I'm, right I'm, there. I'm interested. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm interested about it, right? Finding. I'm like, not only... No, I was just going to jump in, Steve. Sorry, I thought it was a pause. Was finding okay. stuff that will work for the people who can't afford the wall of guns behind Matt or the two safes, two, three, four, 12 safes that Steve oh. has, right? Um, I, I was just going to, right. Um, but finding stuff that will work for them. You know, if you go back and look yeah. at like that story that Elifritz told about running into the gal at the range, right? Yeah. Who had the stalker coming after her. Yeah. Part of it is if, as instructors, as sources of information, whatever is, yeah, it's not for the guys who have the wall or the multiple gun safes. It's what do you do yeah. for the decent, normal human beings who they might only buy one or two guns. And is it more important they have a decent gun that works and some trigger time or the coolest thing under the sun, but they can't afford to get the ammo to go out now that they bought it. Right. So I, I hope to do a couple more of those kind of, more economical guns this year just to kind of see how things sort out let me know i'll put you in touch with uh 
Yeah, I, my dude I'll, over there. We'll, we'll talk a shot. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. We'll talk before then. Yeah, well, I'm, I know. I'll see you. I know. I know. Nobody here likes shotguns. No. So, uh, <laughs> so it's you know that Stoger that is about like ninety eight percent Benelli M two. Mm-hmm. Uh, a buddy of mine's one of those. That's his patrol shotgun right now, and I yeah. believe he bought it and he replaced the extractor with the actual legitimate Benelli unit. Benelli. Uh, not that he had a problem with it. It's just kind of what we looked into what people were telling us that that's the move. And uh, I guess maybe some extra other vanilla parts later down the line, if you wanted to be super sure. But he, I mean, that's like another one where it's just like, yeah. it's, it's not a bad move, especially when accessories for the other guns that it's like an existing ecosystem that works and it is, is and, there. And considering and, there's uh, going to be a price increase this year on the 1301. Mm. I'm glad I already heard you. Big jump. Yeah, yeah but I've they're also like heard... generation three or four, you know, like they're not calling it that, but yeah. yeah. I yeah. just saw yesterday or the day before some discussion. I haven't had any insight on it. The Beretta is supposedly coming out with and will release a shot like an 85% yes. 1301. Yes. Oh, it's a do it yourself. You have it's, to mill it well, out. No, but it's, <laughs> no. I don't mean it that way. It's going to be, it's going to be more economical, but it's yeah. not going to be what we're used to as a 1301. Yeah. They're trying to come out with a little bit more budget conscious semi-auto defensive gun. It's going to be what I've been told and heard. It's going to be that, you know, eight, $900 price pointish gun, which probably means God only knows what it'll actually be. But by the time it shows up on the shelf, some, from what I was told about it, it's, it's, it's really going to be a good, a good contender in that market. But now you've got a 1301 that's being put at the same price point as an M2, M4 Benelli almost, y- you know, right. So you've got this three tier hierarchy of that family of guns because you've got Brett Benelli Stoger, right. All in that same family. So you're going to have the same, um, I- I'll tell you the gun while we're on guns, the gun this year that got me uh, pretty well that I was pleasantly surprised by was the 940. That 940 Mossberg man at 850 bucks, 860, whatever it is on the street shelves, don't don't discount that gun. It's not as soft as the 1301, but man, it runs. <laughs> it, it just kept running all year. You know, this kind of conversation and these types of efforts to me are so much more rewarding than constantly just focusing on what's at the very top. Because how many people actually are going to be using what's at the very top? They may say it, they may, they may buy it or covet it or carry, mm-hmm. but normal earth humans that's not what they're about this isn't their life yeah right. i took that exactly that sds imports 12 gauge and ran it through part of a rob hot class and you know what does it need it you need to find a gunsmith who can shorten the stock on it right hmm. yeah. um then i know steve and i steve's kind of talked about we maybe we don't need to go that short but it's a long stock and yeah, it's got 14-ish. a weirdish yeah it's got a weird design to it that doesn't lend itself to being modified easily. The charging handle on it would, would flay flesh, right? It would take out chunks of the hand until you, I got in there with an emery cloth and rounded everything off and smoothed everything off and took off all the sharp edges. Uh, the optic mount that they had on it was, was poorly designed and executed. But once you got rid of it, you had a sight system that worked like anything we've seen on a Remington 870 going back years. Yeah. You're, you're going to see another company come up with a shotgun this year. That may surprise you. That may not. Um, Hello, son. Mm, no, uh, <laughs> but, but, but it'll, it, it'll be kind of interesting. Um, I expect it to come in in that, you know, that $500 price point range, probably five to 600 is my guess. Won't be too, too bad. I don't think, but we'll, we'll see when it finally gets here. Um, my goal is to get my hands on one early and run it through a bunch of courses and have it like I did the 940 as a loner gun to shooters. Like here, just shoot this thing, you know, oh, yeah, sure. Great. You know, and, and just shoot it. It doesn't matter, but cause that's more rounds. I don't have to put through it, um, but yeah, there, there, there's one or two, <clears throat> at least one more that I know of uh, pretty definitively besides the Beretta Benelli one that we're talking about that's coming. Um, <clears throat> that should be interesting. We'll, we'll see how that plays out. I'm, I'm betting it's a rebranded import. With some okay. tweaks, but, welcome to most everybody right now in the industry yeah. um, on a lot of things. Cause they're kind of bored 
and they really don't want to spend R and D money because they have no idea what's going on. I don't think um, with a lot of stuff, but yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see that gun as well. You know, I'll, I'll be kind of interested in that because it's a shotgun. You know, they're dumb anyways. Um, hmm. Well, to me, an aspect of all this that I think I don't know that everyone's aware of how much of this is the long game. Mm-hmm. That they don't just go, hey, we're we're going to make a pistol and we're going to release it tomorrow, and no, so much, uh, the five hundred nine. How long did it take until all those various variants came out? Oh, oh. <laughs> the scar P, the scar yeah. P. Like we saw that in sixteen, I think it was sixteen seventeen. Right, we started playing with that there when we were doing. Shit. Like, what do you think? Well, we have called? videos of us shooting them. Yeah. Well, yeah, but they had that. They had one of their early FN pistols that was shaped like a two by four. Hey, 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 hey! That I I went. I went to the media event for in St. Louis, like oh six, oh seven, and you know, I'm glad they evolved to the five oh nine. Fifteen years later, (laughs) fourteen, fifteen years later. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're not known for getting things out quickly. Oh, that's for certain. Catching up with the times, obviously. There's really, I mean, you know, there's nothing that I've seen. I mean, I've heard, you know, grumblings about some other stuff, but a lot of that stuff isn't coming to around again later in the year. You, you know, that probably that May time frame again, that April, yeah. May time frame. Come on, companies are going to release their stuff then because it's more of their crowd, so to speak. Okay. Um, well, I, I can think of two things from Springfield that came out, and I think it was just this past year. Oh. And it's their double stack 1911, which they can't say is a 2011. And then oh. the, what was it? The VHS? The Healy, the rifle? Yeah. The bull puppy thing? The VHS? Yeah. Well, I think the, uh, the-, he- the Helion or whatever. Hell, hell yeah. And that, that kind of, on my radar, that seems to have just dropped off. I don't see anything about that anymore. That and the Prodigy, they both kind of dropped off pretty hard and fast. Um, I think a lot of it to do with the Prodigy was is the initial bad press that went around real fast outside of the influencers that were like, it's the best gun in the world. No, it's not. Um, well, I picked mine, to, pick mine up tomorrow after the waiting period, and I'm going to look forward to seeing how that... I think my favorite review of it has been from uh, uh, Brian Eastridge. Yep. And it's basically, and, and it, it, it inspires me to want to go to a 1911 class so I can figure out, I can learn for myself how to fix them because that sounds like an awesome project gun. It, I'm gonna it, go, it I want to go into it knowing, okay, there might be some issues. It might need some, some tuning. I'd love to do it myself. Yeah. It, it needs the barrels, need the chambers, need reaming and cleaned up. Yeah. The, the chambers are way too tight. Now the four and a quarter gun was running better than the five. My five inch government gun was okay till it got warm. And by mm. warm, I mean like second magazine warm. Wow. Then I started to get hiccups, right? I started to get hiccups with it, like extraction issues. I'm like, huh, okay. So weird. just shoot in the winter. You'll be fine. That's what I figured out too, for the most part. And then um, it, it's going to know I'm going to, I'm going to drop mine off to Joe um, yeah. the Chambers, drop, drop it off to him and let him get in there, clean it up. Cause he's already had a couple on his bench um, for, for work. I'm going to let him clean it up, tune it up. Um, i my plate will finally be here tomorrow. One of them, uh, finally, um, that that's kind of nice. Cause they've been, you know, October, November, you know, three odd months late, four months late on plates, uh, with whatever, for whatever reason. But, um, yeah, I'm going to slap a dot on it and a light and I'm going to stay on my nightstand, you know, be kind of that, that, that gun that just gets delegated to X duty after I get it cleaned up and tuned up. And that's pretty much all that gun is going to be for, you know, it'll be kind of a nightstand pistol. You know, guys are like, why are you putting that on your next end? I'm like, because it has a safety on uh, it. Touch that, the one that... I think we have a drunk robot. Yeah. That's why I stopped. Wait. Am I coming through robotish or like, you, I stopped? You, you sounded like now? you did for a second. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll touch him back on the, uh, the other, we're going to say the lower grade 1911s. Mm-hmm. Uh, coming from those other companies, like one thing is like, I don't know if anybody's ever actually a government model 1911, like a surplus 1911. Like those things are polished rocks. Yeah. So I think what everybody thinks about a 1911 now is they think about a 1911 with 
custom features mm -hmm. that then made it into a, a production line. And Drunk then, robot. Uh, unfortunately, and I, I think I know where. And then with the, the, the Springfield version, and like the difference between that and obviously like a staccato, you know. A, go yeah, ahead, Jack. Man. You had one job. It's probably. Yeah. So oh, there's a. No, go ahead, man. There it is. So I was just going to say kind of the way I'm approaching this thing is when I, when I got the job offer from the sheriff, I rolled right across the highway to a gun store, bought my first 1911. They walked it next door to a gunsmith. And I think I paid 500 for the gun and 350 for the reliability package on it. And what so year was I, this? 1989. And so we're talking in today's dollars, that would be, that's considerable. That, that would be lots, right? And that Doug mm -hmm. was a, an American pistol Smith guild gunsmith, yada, yada, yada. But I just came up that way, right? Like at that time, if you bought a gun, that was the stuff you had to do to it, unless it was like a three digit Smith or a Breda. Um, so when I heard every, when the staccatos came out, I was expecting them to have a bunch of work have to be done on them and they didn't. Okay. Well then when the prodigy hit and people had, they had to do work to it, I'm like, What's the big deal? This is what I went through with 1911s, but you got to realize I had to realize 25, 27 years of Glock perfection and all the other polymer frame guns that, that really don't get worked on, broken in, et cetera, the way we used to have to work on break in guns. Yeah. So I, I kind of envisioning my stuff with the prodigy is going to be part explaining that history and gunsmithing thing and part like, okay, so let's see now taking all that into consideration, how to do and what needed to be done to it. Right. If, if, if it Good. does need to be done. Right. I mean, who knows, maybe what I'm getting now three plus months into it has everything taken care of. Don't know. I'll find out, you know, and it's got their optic on it too, which is an unknown to me. I haven't seen their optic yet. Oh, I thanks. Think, look, Steve. Thanks. <laughs> I think the, uh, the best part, of that Springfield double stack is that Duramag is the OEM mag. $39. Those mags yeah. 40 bucks. Are, those are, those mags are the shit dude. And, um, as well as, as long as I have been able to talk still, uh, like price difference between that Springfield and the staccato, you know, a lot of that price is their production custom guns. So th there, there is a recipe to that gun, to that build sheet, and then a dude kind of custom builds it for you. And that price difference is man hours. So wh whatever that price difference is, like say $700, that's $700 of you paying a dude to do all those finishing pieces on that gun. And when you buy that Springfield, that's the level of finish work that you're buying in at versus buying a staccato. About zero. <laughs> about zero. Oh god yeah no no you're right but the, like the other part of it is like we were talking about with this is like there's too many what we'll call instructors that will just kind of like that gun's no good that yeah. gun's no good you know that gun's no good i'm like hey man not everything is about us again it's like cool that's a gun you got we'll make it work if there's problems i've got another gun and a holster sitting in the truck we can get you into if there's problems go ahead and drive out and conquer the world man uh, they're there about learning. They're not, you know, there's dudes that are always there for validation to a degree. Um, but the, that's not what our job is, right? We're not there to validate their purchase. We're not, it's like, Hey man, that's a cool gun. Good job. You know, whatever. Great. It's a gun. Um, but it's not about the validation points of it, right? It's about teaching the students and getting to learn things, right? Regardless of what gun it is they have, I don't care if it's a high point or if it's a Beretta or if it's a SIG Glock, whatever. Um, but that's a big thing. And, and you know, and that's to deal with that, um, that prodigy. Like I knew going into it, the gun was going to need work. Like I, I knew it and I went to my gun shop and I paid full value. Like I, I went, I could have called, probably got one, no big deal. But instead I just, you know, I'm just gonna go buy one. Okay. Let's see what it does. And then what it didn't do. And, and, and it works, right? The, the key is that Duramag, right? There's some internet celebrities that were talking about that gun early on and how the magazine is the problem. Like, no, the gun is the problem. It's not the magazine, dude. I took my six Duramags that I have, various sizes, and I ran them in Chambers guns, Nighthawks guns, 
uh, a staccato gun. <laughs> like the magazine is fine. Duramag makes a mag that runs in pretty much all these stupid guns. So your gun is the problem, not the magazine. When I can take these three, four mags and run them through 10, 12 different generations of 2011s, hey, man, there, there's a thing there. So on that, Steve, just real quick, the Brownells over the weekend announced they've got check, checkmate mags. Anybody, oh, yeah. seen, anybody seen for the 2011s? Has anybody seen those played mm -hmm. with them yet? Not okay. yet, but I'll buy, I'll buy some. Okay. I'll buy a couple. Might as well. Oh, wait, they're from Brownells? Never mind. Um, so, <laughs> they'll, they'll get here in 2024. Um, yeah. Oh, God. Um, but but that's the thing, right? Like, like what else is there? We, we've gone circular. Now you've got the Oracle, the 2311, that's coming out. Yep. That uses a SIG magazine and a SIG barrel and some other, you know, cool woods bank stuff. That'll be interesting. Um, you know, to see where that goes. Um, cool, but we've talked about this for years, right? The original plan was to do one Glock mags and that that didn't work and this didn't work. But when you build a whole new gun from the ground up, basically that will take those things. That, that'll that be interesting. It's kind of like the other company that did it to take the shield mags. Yep. I can't, rem I can't remember who that one was. There's just too many anymore. Um, you are going to see like the year of budget 2011 showing up on the market again. There's a couple already coming out. Um, you know, and there's going to be some that are really expensive too. I'm, I'll, I'll be interested to see what that Oracle gun does and how it works out. That'll be interesting to get some rounds on and get my hands on one eventually at some point in time. And again, let's hope they have the backing, the support, and the money to stay alive right now because it's not the best year for guns right now. I say that, but I also say it that I think it's also because a lot of the gun industry numbers are down as far as from some manufacturers a lot of them that maybe people are just tired of buying the same product re renamed. What? Like Glock? Somebody, and M and P's and SIG. Hey, steel frames. Stop it. That actually was one of, I was going to bring up all the M and P stuff. Yeah. We can talk it, about the M and P stuff. No, let's or not, not the Smith Eric stuff. Will, Eric will get excited. So, yeah, I will. I'm going to find somebody who can machine the, the metal frame for me for a thumb safety. What happened to the 30 super carry? It's that, still that, there. That new, what? Who made that new 1911 that just dropped? I, I kept saying they should. Well, Nighthawk that. had. had no, this was a brand new one that was, I said they should have chambered in 30 super carry and everybody got all butthurt. That would be cool. Uh, just wait, it's coming. I know, um, it, was a, it was a joke. There, there's another company that some here are fond of um, that is going to be dropping one this year, probably at SHOT Show and something. I, you know, my limited exposure to 30 Super Carry and shooting it is that, you know, they should have did it like they planned it X years ago when they had it, but they waited. Um, it was not the right time to release a new caliber in the height of all the money. Um, you know, and lack of ammo, but then you release this thing right in the middle of this ammo crunch of like, we got this new gun, like, well, this new ammo, like, stop it. Nobody asked for that. Just make it some more nine millimeter. Um, 38 super is still stupid. Um, just say I like 38 super, but I'm weird too. To me, 30 super carry it, it makes sense. Is it going to be the answer to everything? No, but I like the idea behind it. Innovation drives other innovation, right? Yeah. Other things. Um, even though it's a redo of a redo, just like 10 millimeter mm -hmm. and yep. 40 and I think you know, that in a CSX and... though, or a CX, what is it? The CSX, it's, whatever the little tiny 1911 looking polymer yeah. Smith that CSX. it's tiny. Yeah. yeah. That and super carry that just makes sense. The gun to me that makes sense for super carry is like a 48 size gun. Mm. Right. Or, or like a SIG. 365-ish and yeah. I think SIG, but whatever. Um, you know, 365. Whatever happened to that 45 gap shit? Died. Died a slow, F painful death. Half New Jersey. <laughs> they they wanted it. Um, <laughs> uh, 48 gap. 45 gap. Oh, my God. Right? How much public funds went into that? <laughs> 
shit. <laughs> oh my god, the forty-five gap. Stop it. You know the other one that's interesting that'll be making an interesting run is the uh, the eight-six blackout. Yeah, that eight-six is an interesting round. Um, dudes have automatically kind of, ah, oh, it's this, it's that. I'm like, I know dudes that have already taken big game with that cartridge, like a lot of big animals. I'm kind of like, that's cool. I, I would like to see an 8.6 lever gun. Mm, 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 mm. Yes, I'm on a lever gun thing again. Nothing that wrong with that. that. Uh, DWX. Finally. Five years so, later. Yeah, yeah. Cool. How how different is that from the Wilson EDC X9? X9. Not how dip well, how it's different cheaper. both of those. How but here's the thing, right? All that is is a redo of the answer gun from Wayne Novak yep. back in the what late nineties when oh, Wayne good. Novak yeah. had that. Yep. It's it, 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 again, it's all a redo of a redo of a redo, right? So it's kind of like you know Novak's you know main spring housing without the grip safety. Da da da. I mean, yes, there's some differences, but you know, here we are. Um, I think if, if they get it priced right, you'll probably do good. People were waiting for it long enough, but they kind of like went, oh. Yeah. Because early the early X9s I saw had magazine problems. Mm -hmm. uh, they seem to have, this was like 2018, 2019. That seems to have been fixed by recent ones I've seen yeah. where, they're, where they're running fine with... So I'm just kind of curious as to how the, the Wesson one will turn out. I think the Wesson gun will turn out pretty good. I mean, I mean, they don't put out garbage per se, right? right? They don't put out amazing, but they put out a good product. And I, and I think that that DWX, DX, DMX, whatever gun is going to do whatever, you know, BMX. it should be a decent gun. DMX. No, BMX. Are, BMX. It's a mongoose. Wait, no, that's Nighthawk with the chorus. I can't remember anymore. Um what are you talking Johnny about stuff? No, I mean, just like you said, no, go ahead. No, go. No, it's kind of like, it's kind of to that point of like people bringing things back that are so-called new. Yeah. But if you remember, that was something that somebody else put out, but like they didn't quite execute it because like earlier, you know, you're talking about FN earlier and scar and it's like they brought the scar out there was supposed to be all these uh modularity all barrels. this modularity that you're supposed to get with it and same with the acr like the acr was like oh, the gun yeah. that was promised and it was supposed oh, to have all this modularity and, and the xcr <laughs> right and then and then sig of all people has come out with their spear that is like you know you have the there you you i don't know if they have a if they're ever going to do a 308, they've got whatever that caliber is that they're doing. But then in the Spear LT, it's like, yeah, here's your 762 by 39 barrel and conversion there with magazines. And you're like, shit, these other guys promised this like 20 years ago, 15 years ago. And like you, like SIG is the people that are doing this? No shit. Just don't drop it. That's okay. I was going to say, probably don't drop the rifle. It'll probably go off. <laughs> well, or don't put it in a holster. Yeah, at least they are making shotguns. Yes. Yet. Yet. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Wait a minute. Wasn't Steve talking about something like that? Oh, anyway. Um... Uh, beige. I think I'll paint it beige. <laughs> or that would be flat, dark earth. Never mind. <laughs> it's, it's, there's talk. <laughs> there's a rumor but it's but the one i was talking about is not them but i would have doubted at some point if they didn't come out with one or if there was a revisit of the slp at some point maybe from fn you never know or somebody else it's like crazy um yeah there's, there's some things here's what i would love out of anything else like make me king of, a, of like smith and wesson for a day just bring me back the third generation gun better Bring me back a Gen 3 5906 gun series, a 50 yes. gun series pistol. Oh my God, dude. Like, yeah. Let's, it's like, kind of surprising that they have day. it. With so many oh. retro things being pulled back into the. Yeah. I'm waiting. Come with on, all the, Scorpions. With, with, with all the machine, Scorpions. With all the machinery having gone away and you don't have the machinists, 
that you had before, because like I know California Highway Patrol stayed with the 4006, 4006 a lot forever. longer than anybody else was going to because yeah. they had employed and they were responsible for them <laughs> a bunch of legit gunsmiths and machinists to keep those guns running. Yeah. Um, and, and they had, I think Smith was doing special runs for them until finally they like, just, they couldn't support it anymore. I would love yeah. to see with what we have with the technology we have now, a redone 4506 and a redone 59 something or oh, other. Yes. Mostly for the, yeah. But it's going to be produced by Springfield. Shut up. Oh, bite your tongue. Here, here's the gun that I want to see this year. Here's the gun that I want to P7. see this year for no, uh, no, God, no, no. The Glock 25. Which was the 25? 308. I'm oh, sorry, the 380. 380. 380. That was uh, I, I'd like a 308 version at all <laughs> yeah. rounds. Uh, full size? I would like to see the 25 first, which is like a 19-ish size gun, somewhere near like 1926. Oh, that'd be cool. Era. I'd like to see that. I, I would love to see that. Because why? Because I would love to shoot a 15-round 380 yeah. with a comp and a dot. Yeah. Of a 90 green plus piece just burning it down wholesale with that gun because i would i would put a comp on it i would put a dot on it and i would be like watch this well that's why i felt so compelled to get the let's see here that beretta right there because of the greater capacity because i enjoy 380 it's fun yeah the 84 yeah 84 is a great gun man carried one forever but no i would love to see the g25 show up i would love to see the g25 show up produced by somebody but i would love to see the 25 show up in 380 Mm. <laughs> yes. 16 90 grain pills. That'd be fun. Well, that's and that's Stupid. my biggest complaint about the 42 is that it the, the magazine's too short. And I was and I and I think we were all at dinner one night with Dwayne and I told Dwayne, you need to make aftermarket magazines for these. Just to make a drum for the Glock 42, that would be awesome. Practical? Mm. No, mm. but lots of no. fun. 42 is a great get off me NPE gun. You know, it, it serves a role, but yeah, I mean, for everything else, it's like, Oh my God, man, give me a Glock, you know, excise gun with a whole Look bunch of ladies in it. We know someone yeah. that could help with this. Oh, I'm sure we do. Do you see the last remark on chat? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I know that one. Yeah. yeah. I, I just, I just actually spent um, a couple of days down at PSA. Mm-hmm. Was down there for a few days uh, working on some other stuff. Um, when are we getting the band back together? That's what we need to do. That's what we need to do is get the, get the, get the whole crew together and go down. I'll tell you what, um, people will dog certain things, right? Like there's certain, again, like Taurus, right? Palmetto State's another one that's had that thing. I've had a couple carbines in classes this year. I mean, you can buy a brand new carbine for them right now for 450 bucks, right? A brand new mid-length gun, whatever, rail. I'm like, hey, man, the ones I've seen in classes this year have all worked pretty damn good. I'm like, it's not like the old days of Bushmaster, right, where, where we right. had problems in the early 2000s with the guns, you know. But I'm like, hey, man, the past couple PSAs that I've seen in classes. And again, it's the dudes that felt the need to get a carbine finally for whatever reasons. Cool. I don't care. And they're like, yeah, man, I, I could afford this. You know, at the time I, I wanted a BC or I wanted a Suns gun or I wanted this. But, you know, I could afford this $600, $500 for this. And it already had everything I wanted versus like the Smith Sportical or the Ruger or whatever it was they were looking at. And, you know, the guns performed well. <laughs> I was like, I, I can't argue that, right? Like, I, like I cannot. And it's another thing. You know, you look at it and, you know, you're doing a round table in class. You're going through guys' guns and you're like, oh, I've got this Palmetto State with this. And I said, cool, good. Yep. Hey, man, here's things to look for. Watch the castle nut. Make sure it's staked. Make sure it doesn't bag itself off make sure the carrier key is staked and make sure it's got the correct black spring in it with the SOCOM upgrade kit if it doesn't have it. And other than that, lube it and shoot the living hell out of the gun. And the dude performed well with that gun in a dot. And he was really curious about some things. So I, on one of the breaks on day two or whatever, I grabbed a box of like 69 grain gold medal match and some 77 gold medal match or whoever it was. I'm like, here, shoot a group with this, shoot a group with this. And it was like, does it really matter? I'm like, watch. And he was like, Oh my God, the gun's accurate. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very, I mean, it's an FN barrel. You, you know, what do you expect? You know, it's, it's a good barrel, you know, and 
And yeah, every company has their dogs, right? We get that. But, you know, uh, looking at Palmetto and, you know, Tom and I are talking with some friends of ours and doing some stuff. They're, they're, they're you know, they're, they're making some headways. It's going to be interesting to see what they show up with this year as well for play. Well, I think the the pattern that I'm seeing is the right people in the right places can make a huge, huge difference. Mm. Taurus, holy crap. The three that they have right now. PSA with Tom. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to be as critical. I'm going to, I'm opening up my, my mind again to, okay, yeah. let's, let's see what they have to do. You should. For, you with should. The, what they're, what they're producing. Which you Tom's over should. at PSA. Victor. Victor. Okay. Formerly FN, formerly, formerly, formerly. Yeah. Um, God, I've known Tom a long time. Jesus going back to Beretta days. Um, yeah, man. Like, like I, I looked at some of their stuff that was going on there. I was like, wow, the most impressive thing to me while I was there was the ammunition, the ammunition manufacturing. Yeah. I was like, he's like, yeah, in this building over here is this. I'm like, Oh, like the only thing they're dependent on is powder. Mm. That's it. That's it. They're, they're, they're making bullets they're making casings or <laughs> primers. They got it all. I'm like, this is awesome. Like it's, 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 it's great to see. And, and I'm going to bring up again, just like with Taurus, this is a good thing. This is positive. This it is. is exciting. It is, so it is positive. I've bashed PSA forever. And you know what? If they have the right people in place, it's not justified I'll anymore. That's why I don't like lists. Good. Things change. I know. The, the, stop it. Nobody cares about the yellow visor. Um, God, Rob. Um, the one thing that I was really interested in that they had, they have one of their AKs mm-hmm. that takes an AR mag and five, five, six. And I'm like, I need that for no other reason that I want one. Cause it's fun. It's an AK and I want one and I'm going to buy one this year. And I'm just going to be like, I want that, you know, here you go. But I dig it just for no other reason that I have a lot of AR mags <laughs> and five, five, six. And what guys don't realize is, you know, two with the current, things that are going on in the world seven six two thirty nine is not going to be around either is five four five and a lot of there's a lot of volume what it used to be it's just not going to be there a couple of manufacturers that i've talked to about this in the past you know six months have been like there'll be some there'll be this but there's not going to be like what we used to see and that was kind of interesting to hear and hopefully they're wrong but i don't know you know I want what I want. What I really, really, really want is like, like the KP nine gun, right? The little AR yes. and thirty super carry, right? I, I want, I, I want thirty super cool. carry in a sub gun. That would be cool. what I like about, uh, like PSA, like they definitely kind of they're like In and Out Burger. They definitely have like a secret menu. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, like you know, uh, you know, obviously, if you just want to buy something and, and just you know have a six pack and build a gun and see how well it works. Um, you, you know, they give you that option, but there's like, there's these like secret hitters in there. And, and like you said, yeah, that nine mil AK, like that thing's great and it's fun. And then also um, like people like PSA Taurus, but more like PSA and like Caltech, they, they have the freedom to be weird. They have the freedom to explore some out of the box shit and they're not Mm going to lose like whatever their customer base is. And, and within that, like some stuff, like they can actually be kind of a little bit more cutting edge, a little bit more experimental, uh, kind of get away from certain form factors because like, they're just not going to lose like whatever their customer base is like it, like it, Mm -hmm. whereas other people that are just kind of an AR manufacturer, like they can't really get out of the box like that because nobody's going to buy it. You know I mean? It, it could uh, be kind of detrimental to them. And honestly, they don't want to spend time and resources like that. So it, it is good. Like, but I mean, it's good. I mean, it's good that Taurus has the freedom to do that. It's good that PSA has the freedom to do that. Good that Caltech has the freedom to do that and kind of make some of those mistakes, but innovate some stuff at the same time. Want a Glock twenty five? Wait, a Glock twenty five and thirty super carry? 
Mm, that'd be fun. No, what, what I really, really honestly want is a good sub gun style gun. Yeah. In 30 super carry, like yeah. eight and a half inch barrel. That thing would really crank the numbers up. Yeah. Mm. That's stupid. I like it. <laughs> I, I like I like this kind of thinking. I like it when manufacturers listen to a lot of us. Yeah. And then they bring in people from different segments and whatever, and they sit down and they're like, mm-hmm. so how soon to go back to a company we talked about already? How soon is Taurus going to be releasing uh, optic ready revolvers tomorrow? Cause they're definitely listening. I just had this conversation uh, with their people, one of their peoples about this. Cause I looked at like that three inch nine millimeter field yeah. gun. I'm like, yeah. Hey man, if somebody made a low profile enough plate that would interface with like the, the house and SES. Mm-hmm. Right, the small little solar one, or the carry, you know, some of the other sort of carry optics that are coming out for dudes. They're all carry optics, but whatever. Um, the lower profile, smaller optics. Like, yeah, man. Like I, like I'd be like, mm-hmm. Put put a dot on this. That's in a very low profile mount that you know gets a little bit more forward of the traditional rear sight mounts that we always had. Um, that would go on the Smith series guns. Get a little bit further forward on the frame. So you can still maintain the rear sight, possibly, um, to act as the backups. Who knows? You, you know, it'll be interesting. Um, it really will. I would love to see it. Hmm. Well, you know what? Yeah, I was going to say. You know what? I would love to see. No, um, I would love to see. And this is, you know, speaking of, you know, this is a guy who's issued night vision in a mall and all that fun stuff. Uh, I would like to see the civilian market like um, Crimson Trace and Viridian and whoever else. I I wish guys like that would step up their game and make kind of forge a civilian market for civilian night vision and enablers like that. I know they're not. I know they're not. I know that's probably a bridge too far. But, you know, at some point, you know, it would be, it would be nice to see people doing that or at least try. I know there's one guy that's kind of has his like laser aiming device and he's on his second generation. I, the name escapes me at the moment, but uh, stuff like that, where it's like just kind of divesting yourself from the military and police market, yeah. uh, just, just again, to innovate and to, yeah lower cost to make things more accessible and again like maybe the freedom to break away from something of a form factor because yeah uh that was like a contract parameter for an agency or Mm -hmm. you know the military you know what i'm saying yeah Um, the the people i knew at crimson trace that i think might have been able to talk to about that got purged after shot this year this this current year um yeah and they're not with companies that are doing that kind of thing. But no, I think you're absolutely right. If we could see some stuff going towards the decent normal human market um, that aren't LE, that aren't mill centric, yeah, that could be a big change. It's there, and nobody really looks at them. It's already here. Um, I have two on guns, two different models of the Hollow Sun lasers. Are th- so they're worthwhile. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I I have one of my B and T nine gun, and it's their small one that only has like the Viz IR laser, no illuminator. It's just Viz IR, and it's great little box. It's about the size of an Engal. Okay, it's it's pretty nice. It, it works well for the purpose that I have it on that gun for. Right? He goes, well, you don't have an illuminator. I'm like, no, I don't need one on a nine millimeter sub gun, especially when either I have it on my helmet, my goggles as an illuminator right or a white light on a gun anyway and or depending on what else i'm doing with that thing like i don't need it particularly on that gun it works very well and it's held a zero amazingly well on and off with their qd lever has been close right and like okay it's still it's still a zone ish you know for what i would want it's not like a hostage rescue gun but it's gonna do what i I want it to do 
that works really well. And a couple other dudes that I trust have played with their mill LE centric ones have had really good luck with them. And and it's like a, like the one I think I bought was like $700 and it works very well. And I have no complaints on that. Right. And you know, I, I get it. Everybody's like, well, this is, tell me, give me an American made company. That's going to make one with American made products and American made emitters and throw your iPhone away and just shut up. Um, but yeah, like, like there are some lasers out there, you know, somebody mentioned it, you know, the Phantom Hill laser, um, very small lots, you know, they only make a couple at a time, you, you know, I get it. Um, the hollow sun laser hasn't been bad at all. I, I, I know, uh, a couple of dudes on a team that, that carry them on their duty guns and they've had great success with them. And they're like, Hey man, we could only get X amount in the budget. And this fit the bill. We bought some, we tested them, we shot them. We, they're working and they've held zero and they've done everything we want them to do. I'm like, sweet, go with it. You know, go forth and conquer. Well, we've been going two hours. The conversation has been great. We can keep on going or we can call it a night. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I wish I saw one or two. Yes. About. What was that? I said, like I said earlier, because the earlier question, I said, I wish I had seen more gear this year to yeah. talk about, but I, I didn't, you know, I, I just, exciting, Jack. I just bought reliable guns. And one, I did weird stuff too. Um, but you know, you know, it's, <laughs> this is the thing though, that there is no difference. I think it was, I forgot who it was. I had this talk with man. It's like, you could take a Colt from 1964 AR, you know, obviously the pinhole size is a little bit different between the large hole, small hole stuff nowadays, but like, dude, the gun ultimately hasn't changed in this many years. Metallurgy has changed. You know, gas systems have changed. It's the same damn gun. Nothing has changed in these guns, man. Nothing is new. It's new to some people. I think on the line with that, the only thing I've seen, probably the thing that stands out the most this year is I'm seeing less stuff break. Right. It's a good thing. I, and so go back three, three years on pistol-mounted optics. And, and we were breaking stuff more often than we were having mounting failures. And we were having a lot of mounting failures. Yeah. Now more and more folks are kind of understanding the mounting situation. Yeah. And the companies have really stepped up. And the only optics I saw break this year were three, four year old optics that hadn't, that had like sat in somebody's drawer or gun safe. And they finally took a class with them and they crapped out within a day. And, but I'm not seeing stuff break. Yeah. Or is, seen, is that a function of yeah. no ammo? Well, I'm, I'm talking about in classes. I, I'm not. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. saying in class, I'm not seeing stuff fail. Yeah. Like we've seen it fail. Yeah. Yeah. It's all because of Facebook not, groups. Yeah. All I have yeah. this year is a wish list. I, I have more of a wish list this year. Buy it all. Yeah. And that's no, why we don't it, receive Christmas presents because we get them ourselves. Right. Uh, but it's like, I, 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 some of this stuff I'm going to have to make, or I'm going to have to convince somebody to make. That's the thing. And, and, and none of it is terribly sexy, but like, I don't know, like, but if they can do it, they might have a winner here and there. You can do this. I'm telling you, this was part here. Here's what the industry needs, right? Like, like this is one of those things that's, I should have been on airing of the grievance of this, but like standardization of mounting for yep. pistol optics, right? Standardization of screws, size holes, things, stuff, whatever. Because if you're like me and Eric and others, we've got this box at a bench that's full of screws for everything. And we pay the piecemeal game, then we put it in the bench grinder to make them fit and do whatever. Like that, that's my one piece. The other one that we need to see is a shift in switchology for weapon mounted lights and lasers. Mm-hmm. We need to see a shift in the way they're being actuated. We need to get rid of certain pieces, parts that are just ridiculous, but they're the only solution right now. Um, but we, but somebody needs to really step up 
it's maybe foreshadowing. Um, but yeah, you know, something, something better in the switchology department on lights and laser interfaces as well. Yeah. Um, because having three buttons to do three different things. And then if you're running a mall and you've got like a mall and you've got your AB fire button, your high, low, medium, and your eight other adjustable settings on the current generations and whatever, and your angles and whatever else you got, right? They don't care. And then you've got two other tape switches on there for your white lights, one to do momentary, one to do constant on, like it's stupid. Yep. Like it is absolutely dumb. Give me a switch that goes all the way on when I want white light and then all the way off <laughs> and we're good. Right. But I, I get it right. Certain strokes for folks, but the switchology issue is a real thing with carbines, especially as the carbines are getting shorter, rail space is getting less. We're putting more on top of them. And I'm not talking hydro mounts and all that other stupid shit. Um, switchology screw interfaces, you know, yeah. a, a standardization across the board of screws and mounting solutions would be, it would be huge. Um, the unfortunate um, part is everybody has their different thought on what that switchology needs to be. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I, I would like, I would like, yeah, standardization in the plugs like that, that surefire plug. Why can't the laser and the light use the surefire plug? Like, why do I need two different? Because plugs? you have a NATO, because you have a NATO spec plug for this, because everybody's got to have this because one's uh, metric, probably one's a bear. <laughs> You've got, you, you know, it should be one plug. Yep. And again, like you said, like what I was asking for earlier, I said, you know, if you kind of had a civilian market come up that wanted to make something that was definitely sturdy, but wasn't kind of so beholden to some sort of contract, you know, they're kind of willing to think out of the box. If I can get a laser and I'll, you know, and the surefire connector is pretty good. Like you said, mm -hmm. if, if they're not going to standardize a footprint for a dot, then just start giving me pick rail on top of all the pistols. So uh, now we're the going only, back to 1970s bullseye right. guns and 1980s bullseye guns. And, and the only people that have that yeah. production right now is a fucking Desert Eagle. And I can get it in like Kinda gold wolf. tiger stripe. Kind of wolf. Right? <laughs> God. I'm just saying, but, but I mean, this, this is it, right? It's all circular again. It all keeps coming back around. When, now we have direct attach clocks. Right. Mm -hmm. No more MOS prints. Right. I know MOS is still there, but now we have the G17 going away for the 47. But Gen 5 slick tops, iron sight guns will still be there. And there's supposed to be, I guess, allegedly some, you know, other stuff for things. But it's like, this is all crazy. Like, hey, man, just give me a standardized footprint. Yeah. Or standardized screws and I'd be happy. Right. Or just make a direct attach, take the cap off. There's a piece of pick rail, drop it on, set the screws, done and shoot it. Yeah. And oh God. Yeah. Standardization. Like you said, the, the connectors, the switchology, yeah. it's like uh enforce whatever magic dark arts that they put in that switch for an enforce. I don't know what that was. And I don't know why no one has paid them money to get that technology. Or I think I haven't touched an enforce one of the new metal ones. I don't know what they're doing. I thought they either, caused a battery drain. Either Enforce needs, yeah, you know, either Enforce makes the rest of the light worth a fuck, or somebody buys that switchology from Enforce and figures it out. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know what, yeah, like I said, I don't know what dark arts they use in that damn switch. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of lights and stuff i am really looking forward to the mod light hog to be released oh you're gonna love it and and i and i'm off graves in three weeks damn it oh uh, you're gonna love it you're gonna love that thing it is ridiculous and so the, the prototype i have right that i that i had uh, for testing is great right it's outstanding there's some changes obviously um the production model outclasses my prototype heavily. that's awesome i need a couple i need one for my vest for uniform wear and i want at least one for one of my go-to rifles yeah. just duct tape it to the barrel i'll tell you no, what, I, I know there are other things yeah. it's it's not terribly new but as far as mod light goes i like that that new legacy legacy heads, heads that they're using so i don't have to so I don't have to take my uh, old 
lights that I've had for probably 10 years yep. and I don't have to throw the baby out of the bath water. Just put a head like, on yeah, it. I could have gone a mouth off. That's good stuff. But I prefer to go with mod light on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I, I like what cloud did with a 3.0 on the rain. I, I definitely like the form factor of that. It, they absolutely did a good job with that. Um, you know, I haven't followed it enough of what, you know, all the cool kids probably talk about, but you know, the thing is just make a light that takes a surefire switch. Yeah. Just, just make a light that takes a surefire switch and, and be done with it and stop reinventing the wheel on certain things. Yeah. Just make the plug. I don't care about however you choose to set up your buttons or whatever it is you do. That's it. Yeah. Well, I've got a mod light thing right here with a sure fire tail cap on it. And that's the one thing I dislike about the clouds is that I have to use their stuff. I can't use the surefire. Yep. Yeah. Oh, having a box of all oh. everything compatible, mix match. It's wonderful. Oh, yeah. oh. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Shelves. Yeah. Full Armories full of it. Yeah. yeah I get it. Well, let's get some final thoughts and some plugs and everyone needs to plug something, Jack. Um, oh, before we, fun. before we go that down that road though, as these guys are, are plugging their whatevers, pay attention to who they mention. Um, primary and secondary is fortunate to have some really, really good people that are part of it. These guys that join the modcasts that spend their time with us, share their insights, except for Jack. Um, Make sure you're supporting those sources that you've found to be beneficial. To me, that is hugely important. And it doesn't matter if they're friends of us or not. If they're providing something good, something that's, that's, that's beneficial to you, it needs support. And that goes with everything primary and secondary. If, we're, if, we're push, if we are pushing out content, whether it be an Instagram post or whatever, if you're liking it, make sure you're giving it a like. If it's helpful to you, share it. Definitely subscribe. Um, it's yeah, we have that whole, that whole algorithm. It's algorithm is not working in your favor. It's working in the favor of the people that are hosting it. And it's all about mm -hmm. providing more clicks. If you want to help people, you want to promote the good stuff because that algorithm is not going to be helping people find the best answers for their, for their problems. Um, with primary and secondary type stuff. And I'm going to go over this a little bit later. Yeah. If you can't support on, on Patreon, give us some shares, make sure you like if, if there's a favorite episode that we've done or article, share it. Cause that is benef That's beneficial for us. Um, if there's, if you have friends that the, the network would benefit from having, or that friend would benefit from being part of the network, add them to our groups. Tell them about the forum that no one uses. So yeah, make sure you're supporting those sources that you have found to be beneficial. Listen to the companies that these guys are bringing up, listen to their own companies and make sure you're providing support where needed. Steve. Oh, yeah. Steve Fisher with uh, Cougar Mountain Solutions. Oh wait, that's work. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> uh, you know, Sentinel Concepts, it's been the thing for a while, still doing, uh, you know, all the industry stuff. You guys can find me on Facebook, Instagram, sentinelconcepts.com. Uh, 23 schedules out. It's, um, I've already got probably a dozen plus courses that are full, which is good for the year already, which is kind of interesting to see. Um, a lot of stuff is, you know, pushed out even into the fall Q3 ish era is already, you know, 25, 30 plus percent, which is kind of nice to see. Um, shooting guns for Sons of Liberty Gunworks, doing a lot with Mike and the crew there. Great dudes, uh, nice guns, just just a great company to deal with. Still doing stuff with Nighthawk, uh, Agency Arms, um, you know, still doing some side stuff with Vortex uh, Optics. You know, that's just a, you know, handshake buddy kind of thing, helping them out. We help each other out kind of deal. It's not like it's a paid gig or anything along those lines. And yeah, man, it's just, uh, it's going to be a great year this year. Looking forward to the training season, getting out and seeing some friends and doing some more collaboration stuff uh, coming up. Um, yeah, yeah, here we are. As a matter of fact, you brought up Sons of Liberty and that mm -hmm. reminded me there was something I wanted to bring up that I'm excited about on the horizon. And I just kind of, as a smart ass brought it up and it turns out it might actually happen. I'm not going to say any more 
but I'm just excited to see what happens around shot. It's not going to happen. Oh, you don't think so? No. Okay. No, they never called me about my signature model shotgun, bullpup shotguns. They didn't call. You know, Han dies. (laughs) Yeah. Han dies. Beth Beth is dying. Beth is dying off uh, off, uh, Yellowstone or whatever that stupid days of our lives meet Sons of Anarchy is. Um, Let me think who else. Everyone's dying. I'm dying. Santa Claus isn't real. Oh, oh yeah, you got oh, you posted for that. about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, that was so good. It was the best Grinch move. That was better than the Han Solo death. I gotta admit, it was so good. I had all these kids crying on some like <laughs> live streaming something weird thing. Like, you know, Santa's not real and it's your parents, they really don't like you. Yeah, it was good. I got booted from that. It was bad. The Han Solo thing threw me for a loop. I wasn't expecting it. And here comes Steve just saying that. Like, yeah, it was he's good. right. How the hell did he get that? Wait, I've got more. <laughs> That's why I mute him. <laughs> when, uh, there's a movie coming that I want to see. Eric, what do you have? Uh, Eric with uh, Sentinel Concepts. Yeah, Eric with Sentinel Concepts. Now, uh, Cougar Mountain Solution um, on the on all the various things. Low light instructor, pistol mounted optics, shotguns are kind of the, the big three. Some high risk vehicle and ped stop stuff there as well. Um, also teaching down at Gunsight. And I'm the editor over at AmericanCop.com magazine. If you remember from the, the gun media event, we did podcast we did a few weeks ago. Uh, Shotgun Summit will be run again yes. in the fall. That's going to be, yes. that's that's Bulky's baby, but Steve and I will be there along with the HOTS. Um, I don't think Tom Givens will be able to make the trip out, but I know mm-hmm. there's going to be some other folks involved and Vang's going to be hosting that and sponsoring it. Mm-hmm. And we're just waiting on the final yes. Dates. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Gonna be um, awesome. Yeah. So that's cool. kind of it for now. I'll see cool. anybody. Anybody at shot? I'll be there. Baller. No, you stay away from my bag. No DNA on my bag this year. Press the button. Everything yeah. drops. <laughs> so, uh, Jack Lewis. Um, with Bastone Strategic Solutions. Um, that's a joke. Uh, they don't exist yet. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm, on, I'm, on the, uh, I'm on the secret menu as far as Sons of Liberty goes. So I think uh, as far as the, if you guys are familiar with Ambrosia Terrebonne, you know I'm a friend of uh, Sons of Liberty. And if there ever was an Ambrosia Terrebonne gun, it would probably be really similar to the one that I'm holding right now. Uh, it would be the Terry rifle? It would be the Terry. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be that... It, It'd be the Terry rifle um, because I would want it to be accessible for everybody because everybody knows Terry. Um, As far as staccato for the time being, they, they uh, still blue team for them until I hear otherwise. Uh, That doesn't make me an expert or an armorer and I'm not a part of sales, but if you would like to shoot it, I will let you. And if you want the guy with the big magic box of guns to come to your agency, I can help make that happen as well. Um, as far as like other industry partners, I would say, you know, I'm not on the pro staff of any of those people, but as far as people that have been very good to me and the homies and where I work, uh, Spiritus has been outstanding. And uh, I run, I literally run their LVS in one color or another every day. Uh, and, uh, you know, also, especially we're big friends of Sierra attack and when spirit has took over this, the production of the Sierra attack sling, uh, which is also what's on this rifle and comes OEM, uh, with a lot of sun's guns, you know, there's a reason for that. Uh, like I said, currently I'm not in the training space. I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Hopefully I see many of you, hopefully I get to see people out there in a class that I'm attending and, you know, we can wrap and hang out. And it definitely sounds like that shotgun summit is something that I need to get to. Uh, Ooh, yeah. I'll bring my bird's head 1301 yeah. just to piss everybody yes. off, just to piss everybody off except for bulky uh, because he's the reason why I did it. <laughs> and, that, and that Sierra tech sling you're talking about, that is a well set up sling. Is yeah. That- well set up sling is mark still behind them or did he sell them off as far as i know he still is 
Yeah, he's I still mean, behind I mean, him. It's just the pro- yeah, the production is spares. I haven't heard from him for a while. He's probably busy he's, doing L three things. Yeah, he's he's busy doing like EOTech shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. EOTech. Yeah. Cool. He told me a funny story about them cats. I mean, I you know I run a EOTech uh, EXPS on my work on uh, we were talking about getting a different battery and like the engineer looked him in the face and said, fuck you. And I was like, man, you guys are kind of in your feelings right now. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll, we'll circle back, you know? <laughs> Sounds about right. Oh yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, thanks guys. Awesome discussion. Big thank you to big Tech's ordinance. Overwatch precision. Filster, Primary Arms, Walther. Big thank you to the Patreon subscribers. If you want to help support the network, go to patreon.com slash primary and secondary. You can help support all this crap. We have so many resources, it hurts. And it's all for free for your use. None of the good stuff is ever going to be hidden behind a paywall. Modcasts will always be out in the open. Initially, they might be kind of closed when we're recording them. And then I edit them and then I release them and then they're open. Good lessons learned from some good people people that have been there and done that. And this helps save you not only money, but also time. So you don't need to have that big box of holsters. You may already have it, but we can help streamline some of these processes. Some of the discussions we talked about kind of applies here. That company, Scallywag Tactical, I have a code with them, all uppercase PNS and the wife's calling, of course. And that's uh, Food Fighters. Um, Scallywag Tactical, the code, all caps, PNS, 10 that gets you 10% off. Yeah. The holidays, at least the holiday part where you're giving presents away is over, but you always need a new knife and it's always nice to buy other people knives too. Um, they have some awesome sales with their broken up crap that still looks good. So check it out. Um, let's see here. I think that's pretty much it again. Yeah. Support those sources that you found to be beneficial. That's huge. Um, if you like what, some of these companies are putting out, make sure you're spreading the word because they appreciate it. And the people that are absorbing the information because you shared it, appreciate it as well. That's all. I will talk to you later.